Oh, you better believe it's time to turn your dream into a reality with Squarespace. That's right, Squarespace. Did you know that Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project? It's true. Whether you're looking to start a new business, showcase your work, publish content, sell products, whatever you're trying to do, Squarespace is the tool for you to get on the web and fast. And looking good. They've got beautiful templates that have been created by world-class designers. And you've got the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks, and you can easily make a beautiful website all by yourself. And you can sell stuff. They've got powerful e-commerce functionality right in there. Analytics, so you can see how you're doing. It's all, it's all optimized for mobile. Get on your phone and check it out. There's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. They handle all that stuff. It's handled. You handle the content end. They take care of everything else, right? Also, buying domains is simple, and you'll get the help you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Squarespace empowers millions of people from all over the place, whatever they're doing, designers, lawyers, and uh, plenty more, artists, restaurateurs, gymnasts. They'll turn your great ideas into something real. Head over to squarespace.com slash bombcast for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code bombcast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash bombcast. And the offer code is bombcast. happening it's tuesday uh <laughs> it's july 9th 2019 2019 2019 hello yeah. 20 it's yeah. still fine teen yeah i'm jeff Kirsch, and welcome to the giant Bombcast. uh brad shoemaker is on assignment good luck brad good luck brad jason ice striker's here hello yes hello how are you doing i'm doing fantastically awesome ben pack hi also here also here also doing great Good Jan? job doing. Great. 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 All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll mm-hmm. be back next week with another episode of The Giant Bobcast. Ah, well, you know what? What are we, we talk about? Let's get into the after, sh- after show here. Since oh, we're right. here. Yeah, since we're here. I don't know how to do any of that. Exit flu. That's right. Uh, let's talk about some video games that people may have been playing. Apex Legends Season 2 is upon us yeah ben, ben you've been playing it i've been playing some of it yeah that's right um uh, apex is is good it's fun <laughs> yeah I mean, like, I, turns I, out yeah well it's weird I, like it was interesting seeing like a lot of the reaction being like oh this is the game it should have been at launch really? yeah like uh, people going, oh they finally finished it everything it was like a beta up until now and i'm like whatever. well i it was good before yeah. this just seems like a better battle pass and i you know yes. like they they added a hop up for the Mozambique that makes it like potentially good in situations. Yeah, which the is... RE45 is a hop up now. Yeah. Like, like there's cool additions like that that I think flesh it out more. Sure, uh, but I, I feel like people are being a little weird about it, being like, "Oh, finally!" Yeah, I think people kind of I, what I what I would suspect happened there is people probably dropped off of it, and then the tone of that game from people who were still playing it. Uh, for the most part, was I wish there was a little more here. Yeah. I wish this was a little more fleshed out. And people probably came back to it in their mind thinking it was a, what, a way worse game than it actually was. Yeah. Because I, I, I played it off and on throughout that whole battle pass. And this is like, it's got some more stuff in it. But I would say it's like a slight upgrade. Yeah. It's <laughs> cool. Anything. Like yeah, no, it's, I, I think the, the challenges, the way they've built the challenges and, and the way they've built the battle pass makes a lot more sense this time around. The stuff yeah. that you get on the battle pass seems to be a little bit better. Yep. But yo, it's Apex. Like it's not, you know. Nothing's like, changed fundamentally. They've added yeah. a character. And those big... Uh, the big dinos are there. Uh, yes, yes, and the map has changed a little bit. Oh, which I shit. look, I I don't know that I, I'm into the big like map change, like battle royale map change, like yeah. idea all that much. Like it's fine, but I it's it, it's not a new map. 
Right. When they blow up parts of Fortnite and I go look at the before and after, I just go like, man, fucking whatever. <laughs> uh, and so like this stuff, like, yeah. It, so it's, you're in like the PUBG camp of you would kind of prefer just a, more a maps. completely new map. Brand, totally. New map. Absolutely. A thousand percent <laughs> new map uh, over over evolving map. I, I can kind of see both ways. I, I don't know personally where I lie because I like the idea. Like I know Kings Canyon like pretty well at this point. Like, yeah. I've got it down. I know like the routes i know the safe spots i know like good high grounds to hold mm. stuff like that and so having that knowledge and then just being like oh they kind of changed every like not everything but these these couple areas are different now it's kind of cool relearning it i guess like i don't dislike what they've done to the map per se it's more just like it's not i, I it doesn't it's not as big a deal like it's i not. think the, having the big dinosaur stuff running around i actually like the the flying around dragony looking guys that drop death boxes when you shoot them yeah i think that's pretty cool yeah i i, I i'm all for them getting weirder and more experimental with the stuff yeah. that they continue to put in this game mm -hmm. um have you tried the new hero at all yeah i she i i dropped an electric fence uh to block off a doorway and i think everyone on my team was not sure if we could walk through it or not <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so sounds about right we, we all died right there um <laughs> can you walk through it? i don't know i still don't know oh, oh my god damn. we all got so shot history continues uh, i think you like I think it's like caustic stuff where you can, but it doesn't hurt you. Yeah, that's what I would assume. It, 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 it's either it, like it hurts you or it doesn't. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> the two. Um, yeah. I, I, does caustic stuff hurt teammates? It doesn't, it doesn't hurt, doesn't. but it does the like slow effect if oh, you can't okay. sprint. All right. Um, huh. Yeah. I So I, I fully went back with the intention of like, oh, yeah, I'm going to play this new hero. Then f first game. It gets picked before I get my chance, and I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. I'll play Pathfinder. He's like my main. He's yeah. Who's... And then I just played Pathfinder. That's pretty much the whole night. Yeah. He's so fun. I just keep playing Lifeline because yeah. someone needs to. Uh... <laughs> it is really valuable to have a Lifeline on the team. Um, I have seen. So here's here's something I've seen. You know, remember that it did that. Uh, they did the trailer for this season. It had that kind of cell shaded style. Yeah. Man, that looks good. Yeah, it does. I kind of wish the whole game was that. Yeah. Well, the new skins look, uh, they don't look quite like that per se, but I think the game is, is starting to, like, the visual style is, is evolving a little yeah. bit. Uh, They're definitely, like, it's becoming clear that they realize, like, okay, we really need to put work into these costumes if people yeah. are going to, you know. And, you know, like, I think it, it launched sometime during season one. I'm, I, I'm not sure, but, like, there is a Lifeline skin that I want to have. Mm. So, like, there's something I'm, like, eventually saving that currency up for. Yeah. But you need so fucking much of it that it's, it's ridiculous. So, I, yeah. Do you have um, any hope of it dropping randomly in anything? Or? Well, yeah. So, I haven't hit the level cap yet, so I'm still getting boxes okay. just for leveling. Uh, and you get some for leveling up on the battle pass. I think I think you still get boxes when you level the battle pass, right? Are there more? Uh, I actually haven't looked too in depth at this battle pass. I guess not, I actually, because I, I bought the level 26, and I did not get 26 boxes. I got, like, eight. Yeah. So, uh, so maybe it doesn't. They're just like peppered about. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Um, because they they kind of reworked a bunch of major stuff about the how the battle pass levels. Now you get cr more crafting materials, which is really nice. Yeah. Um, which is yeah. I mean, that's I want to specifically craft this one skin. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, they took out the or they reworked like uh, banners. Uh, so you're not getting like. Season one kills, season yeah. one death, like every level, they kind of condensed that stuff and, and made some cooler um, little uh, upgrades. Uh, they added, I, I uh, have you have you gotten an L star yet? Yes, briefly. And I threw it down for some, <laughs> I threw it down for like an R301. It was like a fucking, yeah, I, 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 don't have time, I don't have time to learn a gun right now. It's cool. It, I mean, like it, it, it's like the Titanfall. Yeah. One. Totally. They did it. Yeah. <laughs> they put they put another Titanfall gun yeah. in their Titanfall universe game. Uh yeah. Um Yeah, I I, I played a, a kind of a bunch of it over the weekend. Like more than I've played in a good long time. Uh I usually play I'll play like two games and then stop. That's kind of my mm -hmm. I'll play two and then stop and maybe like an hour later come back and play two more and and, and kinda come and go that way. Yeah. But I, I kinda kept going back to it. Uh, over the course of the weekend which was fun um yeah so that's pretty good uh you saw a demolition derby hell yeah oh, oh my god it was okay so we went to the alameda county fair mm -hmm. 
a small group of us. Can I? Can I? I have a quick beef with the Alameda County Fair. Please beef uh, away. I, first of all, it says Alameda County Fair, but it takes place in Pleasanton, California. That's part of Alameda I, County. I just think like, hey, just call it the Pleasanton Fair. Pleasant Fair. I live something in Fremont. Like that. That's part of Alameda County. And I'm, I just, saying, I'm like, just saying. I'm just saying. There may also be a Pleasanton. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Uh, okay. I guess. Or, I was or there may actually be an Alameda small. like town. Like also, city. do you really want to go to Alameda for the Alameda County Fair? Hell yeah! Put it on the naval base. That shit's cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because yeah. like, there's the do fair. There. The fair comes to Petaluma, okay. but, but that's not the county fair. Okay. No. The that's county fair comes to Santa Rosa. Yeah, okay. that's right. And it lasts way longer, is way bigger, but also way shittier. <laughs> yeah. Mm. But they have a horse racing track, so okay. it's like kind of a toss up. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so you kind of have to decide what you want to do there. Usually okay. the traffic's way worse for Santa Rosa, so mm-hmm. fuck that. Anyway, Alameda County Fair. Yeah, it, it, so that fair, um, I, I'd been once previous, one time, the previous year to see motocross uh, mm-hmm. there, and it was Madness. kind of disappointing. Like, it, it was just like, they just kept going off the same ramp over and over again. Like They just keep going around in a circle, don't they? They can't just like stop and build a new track in the middle of it. No, it's I not, know. Like, I it's get not the it, excite but by it course just, editor. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was a little <laughs> underwhelming. And then that, that, uh, that fair in particular is very agriculture focused, I would say. There's a lot of like... Farm I think a lot of them are. Yeah, right? I mean, a lot of them are. Petaluma has like the ugliest dog contest, but a lot of it is is like... Yo, this is a this good is a cow. This is a real big pig. The biggest We're gonna pig was off this gone. Cow. The what? the grand supreme hog was not in its pen. Oh, oh no, it really? was, on the it was loose. out w- loose in the wild. We assume there was some sort of hog heist or, or something right. mm-hmm. to they lifted it out. But the hog heist. The, the real selling point of the fair for us, we were really gonna go for the demolition derby. It cost yeah. an extra ten dollars oh, yeah. to get reserved seating. Um, and, and you don't want just general admission for that because you could die. No, yeah. well, there was the dirt zone. Okay, there was uh, the, the dirt first zone? the first few rows were marked as dirt zones, and we got there. So we got there. Uh, Show me to the dirt zone. I would. <laughs> you don't want to see my dirt zone. The track was like fairly large. I would say it's like maybe like a, a like eight cars long by three cars wide. Let's say enough room for them to do a really good, nice figure eight. Okay. Okay. You know, just like, and that was the first event. It was. Oh, they actually did like figure eight racing. Figure eight like, racing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Whoever can do the most figure eights. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't really understand exactly. They, they kind of dole out the rules slowly. Demolition Derby is an art, not a science. Right. So there's kind of, the, the rules are always real ambiguous. It's, the rules are always like, you watch a heat and go like, that guy fucked those cars up. And then you wait 20 minutes for some guy to get on a loudspeaker and go like, car eight one. And you're like, fuck that guy. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I I actually had no idea what was going to go on going in. Like I just knew it involved cars crashing. This, it that that de- happens in a demolition. There's a yes. derby. There's demolition. Yep. Boom. Um. So they do the figure eights. It was fine. It was like oh cool. They're like there were some close calls. These guys are like really good. Like you could tell like these are skilled drivers mm-hmm. at like maneuvering around each other. Um. And then. The Waters Zamboni came out. No. They played all of Crazy Train <laughs> uh, while the dude was just shooting. I was water. about to ask if they wet the track down or not. Oh yeah. yeah. So we were we were wondering. They were like, "This dirt zone's not very dirty. Like <laughs> it's like a dust zone at yeah. at worst." Uh, but then it got real wet. Oh jeez. Uh, the guy had a whole routine. He had a hose. He would spray the audience every once in a while. What the he fuck? Was, yeah, that's <laughs> what? I mean, that's not okay. The people well. in the dirt zone. We're oh well, yeah. If you're in the dirt, if you're in the dirt zone, yeah. and, you, hey, you knew I, what you. I would rather get sprayed with water than dirt, personally. Fair enough. Um, Once they, again, do you do both. you pay extra for the dirt zone? Uh, no, but there were people oh, who wow. were very obviously like camped out. And the, there was a little kid with a mullet who was getting so psyched every time he got sprayed with dirt. Nice. He was just like jumping up and cheering. But once, okay, the so they start rolling the cars out, and they it, so the guy so the guy shout casting this thing. The Please, guy. I can't. Stop what? It. No. <laughs> what the? F- he's he's, a, he's an announcer. Is he using he's not shout cast. Is he using Winamp? You can't do this. He was. Li- Did he have a gaming? Show? All right, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And he starts, you know, introducing the cars and the first, like, they were just like, this guy is a local, whatever. This guy is, uh, this guy is whatever. And that, but the last guy, ladies and gentlemen. 
Get, get on your feet. This dude, he's 77 years old. Oh, fuck yeah. Whoa. He's been doing the Demolition Derby for 50 years. This is Whoa. his 50th year. He's recovering from open heart surgery that <laughs> oh he had my God. six months ago. Fuck yeah. And he comes out in this car that's like shooting flames out Whoa. the top. He's like pumping up the crowd, you know, doing donuts, spraying everyone in the mud with the mud. Uh, and then they just start fucking crashing into each other. Oh, my man. God. Yeah. And so I guess the like thing was like you just go until uh, your car can't go anymore, mm-hmm. and then the, you're like timed out if you don't hit anyone in two minutes. Like that was the rule. Okay. Like, yeah. you know, if, you, if you can get your car back going within two minutes and get a good like good hit in, you're good. And like you know they're playing like ACDC. Sure. It's Ozzy disrespectful. Ozzy. I don't want to hear music during the sports. <laughs> <laughs> this was like some hardcore stuff. They had yeah. cusses in there. Oh, man. Um, Holy shit. Yeah, it was what that crazy. kid with the mullet think. Oh, he was just living it up. But the it was really it was really sold by the dude yelling. Yeah. That that dude you can tell like he has done this a thousand times. It made me like I, I, I watch a lot of fighting game tournaments, I watch a lot of esports stuff and you, you know, know what have, hype is. You oh, understand hype. I, You've experienced I, hype. Hype, but also, like, you know, casting can be hard. Like, especially if you're doing, like, an eight-hour day. <laughs> you're just there. You kind of run out of things to talk about, you know. And and most of those scenarios, you have, like, another person, maybe two other people you can kind of bounce off. Sure. This guy was flying solo. Wow. And he was just, like, the crowd was eating up every inch of it. He was just mm-hmm. out there, like, hey, everybody, anyone out there have a beer? No oh, way. Yeah! What are you guys drinking? Coors Light? Yeah! Uh, and then he'd be like, that stuff killers. doesn't even give me a buzz. What about <laughs> Bud Light? Oh, yeah. What about Modelo? And he just listed He's just like... the Paul Stanley of fucking Demolition <laughs> Derby announcers. <laughs> but it worked 100%. Oh, yeah, totally. yeah, no, and meanwhile, these cars are just slamming into each other. People are like... He's like, I hope somebody out there's got a beer for me. <laughs> what? And then he started to be like, oh, we got a Chevy versus a Chrysler oh, out no. there. Let me hear it from the Chevy folks. And this one dude next to me was just like, fuck Chevy. <laughs> and I just, I, I was, I, I cheered for both of them because I, yeah. I want everyone to have a good time. Of but course. like, yeah, I felt like I was, I was everyone. not in a safe pick, space. If you want to make it out alive, pick a side. Yeah. All right. No, I'm going to choose whichever it's, it's one has like, the it's loudest. It's like prison. Okay. You have to fucking join one of the gangs. Whichever gang is <laughs> the need loudest. Protection. Cheering the loudest. I'm going with them. Or else um, that mullet kid's gonna fucking do all sorts of stuff. And, but like, so the thing that got me was um, obviously these guys like have relationships with each other. They, they're probably the same crew. There's probably like you know like ten total, and they're like changing and out. And a lot of them are like going to you know it's like this is this is the season for derbies. They're yeah, they're you know they're, they're going, going around, around for all the different fairs like doing this stuff like. And yeah. but they really had some like good moves worked out. It was really kind of like. It really reminded me of pro wrestling where it would just be like they have some one spots. Gu- yeah, one okay. guy would like set something up by pushing another yeah. guy into another guy at the last minute or like a guy would be like slowly backing up to hit somebody and somebody would come in from the other side and they'd like double team a guy. It was it was like there was some serious demolition derbies fucking rule. Yeah. The, the, I feel you like really I, fuck those cars up. I missed out so much, you know, the North Bay didn't really have a lot. I feel like demolition derbies and monster trucks are way more of like a Midwest Southern thing. I can see that, yeah. Um, and because like the county fair is only in town for a very limited time, and then on top of that, like they'll have nights where they rotate, like right. two nights of demo derby, two nights of monster truck, whatever, yeah. whatever. So you don't really get who's going to the county fair multiple times in a row. Yeah, yeah. Well, so Petaluma was always like the last night was the demolition derby. The last night of the fair was the derby, yeah. and so that was pretty much the only time we would go is to go see the derby. Um, that was the thing, like my parents, you know, owning an auto repair business, they were giving used tires to a lot of the drivers. So there would be like oh, the sure. name of my parents' shop spray painted hastily on the side of all these cars. <laughs> uh, and so we would go every year and, and watch it. Uh, and like, yeah, I, the, uh, got, so let's see, what's the best way to explain this? I know a guy who is heavily involved in the derby scene. Okay. okay. Uh, Ken, uh, who also runs an arcade business now. Like he was in the movie theater business for a while, but eventually transitioned into like running locations and bringing machines to movie theaters and laundromats and that sort of stuff. Yeah. And so when I had that pinball machine and I needed to get it worked on, I called Ken and said, who's your guy to fix this stuff <laughs> and, and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, 
Um, so yeah, like the there was a while there that like a uh, guy that worked for my parents was driving in derbies, so we would go, you know, to see him when he was in not even lo- like not even around Petaluma or whatever. When he's like, oh, we're going to Antioch for the fucking Antioch derby, like fuck oh, it, wow. we're going to Antioch, <laughs> and drive all the way out there just to watch the demolition derby. Um, and yeah. It's just fucking badass. Those cars get fucked up. They're good. Yeah. And sometimes really they, you know, hits. like sometimes you'll get like two or three derbies out of the same car. You oh, know? Really? like it's, yeah. They're like they'll huh. be like, oh, well, we need, we need to tow it out of here. Like it's just, you know, the, you know, the radiator got fucked. And so that happens, but like whatever, we can derby it again. There were definitely uh, a couple cars that were just like supremely fucked up yeah, at the totally. start of it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. It's like, you know, you got the guys in the back, like before the derby starts with sledgehammers <laughs> hammering because you want the car to bend the right way right you don't want it to bend down into the rear wheels as it g- takes damage so you hammer like a crimp into the trunk oh, wow. so that it folds up when it gets hit yeah. not down yeah uh, and so there's just a lot of really weird shit like that like they move the batteries into the compartment with the driver and they'll usually have a second battery so thing be like fuck it, pull it oh, off put it yeah. onto the second battery and try and get going again uh they uh, had like um I, I guess this is probably a safety thing but they had like a little wooden stick on everyone's uh on the bar that like goes on the driver's side from like where the the rear view or the yeah. side mirror is up to the top mm-hmm. just like a little wooden stick and if that broke that means you were out and mm. i assume that means like huh. that's probably because any sort of dent that's happening near the driver's head you right. want to immediately like interesting because so like the the rule was always you could not hit someone in their driver's side door mm. like that was against the rules like if you did that you would get disqualified yeah uh, and that that was usually how that stuff went. So I wonder if it was more like if you broke someone's stick, you were out yeah. because you hit it too hard. Because it happens. Maybe, like, yeah. And you'll see people like hitting huh. the brakes. And you know if you haven't watched a lot of them, you're like, well, you just lined up the fucking sickest <laughs> shot. What are you doing? Yeah. You're like, oh, you can't. You can't do that. Um, yeah. That's I. Otherwise, that 77 year old. Exactly. Would have I know. Yeah. in as many. That dude got second place. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. He was. Nice. He was. He was kicking it. He was doing some real shit out there. Um, <laughs> And then, yeah, man, the fair. The fair fucking rules. Tell me about the food. Uh, the food was, I hear all about was food. really hit or really miss. Okay. Uh, the biggest trend right now it appears to be curly fries. Okay. Curly fry <laughs> bricks specifically. Sure. Okay. Just like a mangled. Seasoned? Oh, yeah. Seasoned, okay. uh, like full of, like topped with mac and cheese, topped with cheese. Cheetos and everything. Cheetos and Cheetos everything. and fruity I don't, what pebbles. Happened, like, this, is that YouTube's fault? Like, just there's Cheetos in everything happened. now. Yeah, like all of a sudden KFC's well, got a Man Cheetos. Versus... Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, the like f- stuff coated in fruity pebbles and then deep fried. Yes, is, is a big one. And that was like, it was like, uh, it was like a savory stuff too. With the fruity pebbles, yeah. Weird. What the fuck. Okay. I, I don't. That's I had not... a monster dog. Yeah. They had, was, it, was it really big? They had three sizes of corn dog. All right. They had the normal, which is like a normal corn dog. Hey, can't go Basic wrong with that. corn dog. Right. Yeah. Get two of them. Child. For a child. But, funny, funny you should mention get two of them. Also, this is a fair. This is once a year. Right. You need to have something. That's you, need a little, to, you need to go a little extra. Then they had the jumbo dog. Okay. It looked to be like a good dog and a half. Let's okay. say. Yeah. Nice. Get two of them. Just like, yeah. 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 And then they had the monster dog. Here which okay. This Here thing was, I would say, a good... 14 inches of pure corn dog. It was on a on a steak. Okay, not, not, not like just a, a stick. Not, not just a stick, like a like a like I could a kill would, a vampire. You could kill a vampire. Thing. Uh if so you got too close you to my two, dog. You get like two of them. That I was so excited. I'm like, look at this monstrosity. Just mm-hmm. like it's carrying with it's like it's like a two pound. <laughs> No, not two pound, but like that's that's too much. It's like dog. a pound and a half of of dog and bread yeah. in, yeah. give or take. Yeah, I'm eating it. I get about a third of the way in. I'm like, this thing is great. It's like it's a pretty good. It's a pretty good corn dog. You mm-hmm. know, it's like fresh. I saw them make it. Yeah, you know, of it's course. Nice. Yeah. It's just that's... right out there. I get halfway. They had fryers that big though, man. That's that's pretty. Impressive. Impressive. They were like Inches they were like hog dog. They were like long. Oh, you could dip them. They in were like wells almost. Ooh, gotcha. I saw them. Just they were not very like wide or tall, but they right. were just very vertical. Okay. I hear you. It was two goddamn hot dogs. It was not a monster dog. Oh wow! You two, got you got to the middle. And what a fucking and scam! It fell out like it legit. Uh, the oh, last little chunk just like because I was bitch. sliding it up as I ate. You know because yep. I'm I'm a man of class right i'm not gonna like eat it like a fucking corn, corn cob dog. typewriter like goofy does um it was just two hot dogs in one shell mm. even the jumbo dog was bigger 
than the monster dog. Well, you should get you should go back and be like, I want a jumbo monster. Stop fucking me on this. Yeah. I want two jumbos. Yeah. Please. But on one steak. Yeah. <laughs> um Yeah, ripped off dog. Let's see, what else was there? Deep fried Oreos. Sure. Classic. You got uh oh no, another big trend are like Instagrammable milkshakes. You know those like Oh uh, I hate this thing. Wait, trend. What? Yeah, so it's just like a jar. Okay, imagine like a mason jar with a handle, and then and it's you got throw like... it at someone. You put it on Instagram, and then you write the caption: "This was cement." And then see what happens. Like, I don't get it. What do we? What do you do with this thing? Jeff, I practice nonviolence. Please. Okay, all right. Um, no, it was like so. It's like full of milkshake, and then the rim will be so like the one we got. The rim had like chocolate sauce, chocolate sprinkles glued on with the chocolate sauce. Okay. Oh, it's... a bunch of whipped cream, okay. a piece of chocolate cake. A brownie. What, why? No. What? So it's, it's like prettified. You have to you have yeah. to eat that before you get to the milkshake because it's yeah, covering it. Yeah. yeah but, and it, like it, doing it for the gram. Yeah. It's these like it's there's so many chasers. But wait, oh, hang on though. Are they literally calling them like Instagrammable? They're or, not. Or, but okay. like you see this trend oh, with like. Uh, have you seen the place in Japantown that does like the oh, boba yeah. with the whole cotton candy yeah, on top? Yeah, it's dumb. That place and... closed down, thank God. Oh, thank <laughs> God. It's just people doing it because they want you to take pictures of their fucking stupid... Because yes. it looks better than This presentation is, yeah, yes. is everything, right? Yeah. Uh, you eat with your eyes before you eat with your mouth, actually, if you think about it. Um... That's why I only eat blindfolded. Because <laughs> the food you're eating, you know you don't want to look at. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, these beans came out of the microwave. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'm looking at the performer uh, schedule for the Alameda County Fair, and I'm yeah. really bummed that I missed the Shanti. Oh, <laughs> damn. That's... Oh, that's perfect. That's, that's the sad. Per- yeah. He's like the second performer. And then I missed Allie and AJ huh? of Disney fame. Wow. Oh, jeez. Who are Allie and AJ? Allie and AJ, they did, oh, what's the fucking name of that song? Uh, I'm Double Allie. Trouble. I'm AJ. Or what? <laughs> that's good. <laughs> the the, the that's, that's, yeah, sisters. That's, that's probably, that's probably right. Uh, I can't. I'm, why am I looking this up? Why are oh, we even looking this up? But we could I, still. I oh no, we also missed Vince Neil. Damn it! <laughs> of Motley Crue. Fame. Of oh, Motley Crue. I'm I'm not that's how he's marketed. I'm was, not going to look up Ali and AJ anymore. I was tempted to go see that you know, list. Uh, uh, um, and then maybe the did most... you take a picture of the milkshake for the internet? Uh, did you put it on the internet? I didn't. I took a picture of the corn dog. Okay. Though. Um, it's really, it's really, you guys, it's really big. Look at that. Look at that. This is I'm posted online, but like it's like that, yeah, that's pretty huge. You could kill somebody with that thing. You shouldn't. I play. fucking love. It. And the last the last thing I'll say about the fair is like so now that I'm adult. Well, okay. You know how the fairs will have like exhibits and exhibitions. Yeah, and it's like, like oh, yeah. I submitted the my flower or mm-hmm. my pumpkin. Yeah, like Santa Rosa would have like the whole hall of flowers and yeah. all this other stuff or like the like art kids will do art. Or like here's a guy wearing the fucking like slap chop fucking microphone selling knives and shit yeah. in some or hot tubs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, hot tubs. A big hot tub <laughs> section at the fucking fair. Yeah. Or fudge. Fudge. Always the fudge guy oh, who's just like Let's get some fudge. Clover fudge. Get some fucking hot, fudge. Hot tubs and fudge. Hot tubs and fudge. <laughs> Uh, but like, so now that I'm an adult, I can kind of appreciate that stuff. Mm-hmm. I'll go and I'll look at the art and I'll look at the flower arrangements and sure. it's like, and you oh, can this have is a nice. Beer and yeah, you can like have a beer, you walk around and I realized like, oh yeah, that's exactly what I realized. I'm like, parents just come here cause they can just drink. Totally. They can just walk <laughs> around and drink and yeah. like their kids will just, just fucking kids, You go ride the Gravitron 10 out. times in a row. Here's another 20 bucks. Get the fuck out of it here. It seems like such a lovely thing. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm going to take my kids to the fair. Yeah. I'm going to have two beers and I'm just going to like <laughs> and look at some local art. Yeah. yeah. It, it, honestly, like I wish there was a year round. I was fair. never in fear of getting lost at the fair because I always knew where my parents were. They were at the beer tent. <laughs> yeah. They never left the beer tent. It was either, yeah, for me, it was either they're at the beer tent or they're at the big turkey leg zone. Yeah. <laughs> I've just never been a, like, turkey legs are so unwieldy and just a mess. Like, I just can't get down with a, a gigantic, like a walking turkey leg. No. Like, I'm going to walk do... around with this thing. Like, the Ren Fair, nothing I'll I can't. maybe do it at a Ren Fair just because I feel like I'm like, I'm like, yeah. oh, this is too Also, too I, don't like I don't think they have, I don't think they have corn dogs at the Ren Fair no. usually. <laughs> Which is, I think, a missed opportunity, honestly. They do have mead sometimes, and that's... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ye oldy corn doggy. <laughs> <laughs> they totally do have corn dogs at the Ren Fair. Oh, you're, really? you're going yeah, to a better totally Ren Fair than the one I yeah, went to. Yeah, I guess then, so. Tell me, give me the address of your Ren Fair later. <laughs> do they have a roller coaster at the Ren Fair? No, a I don't think so. Can I get on I the Gravitron? So. 
No, no Gravitron All right. for sure. Also, I don't know if they, this is a new thing, but they've started listing the max magic. max height. Uh, requirements Max. on some. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. They like, saw you coming in. in. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, quick, write it down. Because we wanted to do the water log, and I was like worried. I was like, I don't know if I can, like, right. I'm going to go scope it out. And I saw it, and it said Max Height NA, and I just got so yeah. excited. <laughs> I'm like, I'm wearing my pumps, you know, I'm, I'm like seven foot today. Right. I'm going to go Good. ahead and. Uh, <laughs> getting this water ride but as soon as i got in that thing my like knees locked into place under the awning of it i thought oh, i was gonna sh- die i thought was- I, yeah i feel like fair rides are not are never comfortable no and, and i imagine at your height i need like a whole so. thing to myself yeah. like a whole row basically okay. yeah. and i can just, just lay sideways man spread maximally yeah. or, or lie down um i did play one game at the fair uh, i played the shoot the water into the clown's mouth game mm-hmm. my gun didn't work it's rigged. And I said, I said, excuse me, ma'am, my gun isn't working. And she said, oh, don't worry about it. She gave you a prize anyway. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> she let you play again? No. Don't worry about it. Don't worry well, about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. No. And then it was our, and then we had to like get to the, my friends were in line for the other thing. And she was, was counting yeah. that. Oh, fuck. What? Oh. Well, our... She was just like, don't worry about it. Turned around, went to the other side. You know how they are usually like a yep. yeah, like circular like... kind of. Just went to the other side. Don't worry about it, Han. I think there was a Han there. <laughs> oh, okay, then that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I didn't. I mean, right. I, I guess I, mean, I am honestly, still worried honestly, about honestly it. that's a better experience than <laughs> if she would have been like, "I'll let you play the next time." Yeah, you'd been like, oh, "I guess, all right." <sighs> fucking stuck here. And then you have to like, wait for another crew to show right. up. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about it. Do they still have uh, really shitty tiny square mirrors with logos of bands on them. No. Like, can you get like a Van Halen mirror for to popping a balloon with of... a dart? Yeah. <laughs> right. We were looking for that, but we were specifically also looking for and couldn't find any sick wolf art. Oh, mm. shit. Mm. Right? Like, yeah. I, I remembered back to, I had like three sick wolf arts in my room right. growing up that I won from county fairs. Or in like, it was, I think it was two wolves and a Merlin. Like a, doing a cool spell, like you together, know? like okay. summoning the wolves, or no, are the like, wolves like guarding Merlin? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I arranged them. Um, there was like three separate paintings: wolf, three separate Merlin, paintings. wolf. Okay, gotcha. three separate. Okay, all right. I thought it was like a three wolf moon, but with like one of them's a Merlin. One of them's a Merlin. Now it's it's all it's here's 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 what is the percent makeup of prizes that you can win at the fair. Still, we're still working with like twenty percent just generic cats, dogs, mm-hmm. animals, yeah, non licensed. Uh, 50% Pokemon. Nothing's licensed there. Tight. Uh, 20% Rick and Morty. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then the rest is Minecraft. Oh, okay. Um, oh, yeah. And then Minions still painted on everything. That hasn't gone anywhere, luckily. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're painted, yeah. Yeah, like the, well, the the House of Mirrors, the fun house. It's just covered in Minions. Well, they have, hey, they look re- like a Minion. I, you think they would repaint the House of Mirrors to be Minecraft at this point? Or, oh, for, or Fortnite, honestly. Or Fortnite, yeah. I feel like... I feel like they're hedging their bets on the Fortnite stuff. I feel like they were like, "Oh, this it's a yeah. fad; it's going to die down." But they they weren't ready for how popular it was going to be. There was so many Minecraft and Fortnite shirts. It was mm. it was insane. Like it made me think back to they give away shirts. That's just, interesting. No, like kids oh, okay. wearing gotcha this merch. That's like, a good litmus test. Yeah, mm. yeah. It was it was surprising because I was thinking back to when I was a kid, and it's like kids would wear like nintendo stuff once in a while yeah but, like it really and, like, wasn't readily like it wasn't until available. hot topic came along and yeah. said here's a chain wallet with mario on it you dumbass yeah, yeah. That, like that that stuff really started existing in a in a in a big way again right? yeah and it, was it like, wasn't just like the pac-man days there was like a merch craze around pac-man i feel totally. like it was always random stuff like i had a rogue squadron t-shirt that i like liked and like i was like but I you probably got it like, for like buying the game yeah, right it wasn't it, like you went to a store and said give me that rogue no squadron you t-shirt. don't you didn't yeah. think to like go to a store and buy a video game clothing yeah you couldn't really you fucking yeah, couldn't you couldn't right. or like you'd have to know somebody who like went to japan and got stuff because yeah. like you can maybe find stuff there but now it's just like you can you can literally walk out to like a school and figure out what the most popular video game at any given moment is. Yeah, it's weird. Hmm. Uh, I looked today after thinking about it. In the, I was driving in this morning and thinking about Fortnite merchandise, as you do. As you do. And, you do. Uh, and then was like, man, I, I wonder. They must make Fortnite license plate frames by now, right? And of course they do. There's yeah. like multiple. My other car is a battle bus. No, n- nothing like yeah. So, so and and so that actually stemmed from this question that I will now present to you here. But more importantly, I want to send this to someone who has more time on their hands so they can do the legwork and find out for reals. 
Do you think the popularity of Fortnite has led to kids being more polite to their bus drivers? Yes. Do you think that, that kids now thank their bus driver on the way out of the bus? Yes. Okay. It was, uh, that was legitimately, <clears throat> excuse me, I believe there was a, a craze of but thanking the bus driver memes out of the UK, I want to say. Okay. I want to say this was a UK-based meme uh, movement. Mm -hmm. But I yes, I legitimately think, like even if they're doing it as a joke, right. as a meme, totally. they're yeah. still doing it. Yeah. And I'm sure the bus drivers like that because, God, can you imagine... What or do they mean? think like, oh, these kids are being ironic and they really hate me? I know why. At they're least they're not me. being openly antagonistic, which is probably yeah. what they usually get. Sure. Yeah. Is this just school bus drivers, or is this like Muni? I'm thinking all buses? school bus drivers, but okay. I don't know. I, right. I, you know, I guess, I guess it, you know, wherever kids are on a bus. All right. Uh, but uh, in my in my head, it was always school bus. I'd have to do the research. <laughs> a buddy of mine drives a school bus. All right. I'm gonna go ask that's, him. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. That's that'll be our one. Our one anecdote. Yeah. I'll report. check it next week. Do you think there's a kid who gets on every day and says, where are we dropping? Yeah, that's, that's, that's actually the, my follow-up is like, do you think that like, bus drivers are now like inundated with that shit and just like, man, fuck you. Or if they you take me or, to Tilted Towers? Exactly. Or does, does the cool bus driver say Tilted Towers and then the kids roll their eyes and go, whatever, Gramps, and then he's, sit down. He's got like place. a little uh, pinata hanging from the rear view yeah, mirror. Yeah. Uh, and he dabs. You know, so there that's are positive funny. effects of video games, and if it's bus drivers dabbing, uh, that's the most positive of them all. Also, and eye coordination, just, that's cool, but... Just want to real quick say happy dab day to everyone. It's the official dab day Aww. because um, 710 upside down is, is oil. No, that's tomorrow. Oh, oh is that tomorrow? Is it it's the 9th. Tomorrow. Wow. Happy, by the time you're listening to this... They had to put live, one day of rest, rest be between tomorrow. National Video Games Day and <laughs> National Dab Day. Uh... Otherwise, what the fuck? We wouldn't be able to handle it. Right. Yeah. Society way would collapse. Intense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, be We're doing the running, Mario one day and then. Yeah. <laughs> running rampant in the streets, huh. setting cars on fire. Wouldn't be able to handle it. Um, Jason, what yeah. you been, how you been doing? What's uh, what you been, you got any video games? You've been. Yeah. yeah all games. A little bit. What, one I can't talk about just yet. Okay. Uh, it's Ooh. a fighting game though, but uh, that'll be interesting to talk about when the time comes around. But, mm. um, I've been playing a card game actually, which is still kind of like a fighting game. Spades, yeah. Uh, but it's it's cards and it's not cards. fighting. You go card game, but continues. it's got fighting game characters in it. This is called Ooh. Teppen. Uh, now, what does Teppen mean? Is I it have like absolutely is no it idea. King of Iron Fist tournament. I thought it was Teppen Yaki. Okay, or Teppen Yummy. If mm -hmm. the recipe was good, uh, is it King of Iron Pissed tournament? <laughs> hmm. Like angry, like tech, like with a P though. Oh right, mm. it could be. Let's go with that. Okay, all right. Anyway, this is this is a digital card game uh, from Gung Ho Entertainment, who did Puzzle and Dragons, which I, I oh. put hundreds of hours into. Okay, um, and they've had a, a relationship with Capcom in the past. They've had like Street Fighter characters in their and like Monster Hunter characters in their games before, but this is just a full fledged like Capcom digital card game, yeah. essentially. Uh, a little bit like Hearthstone, Hearthstone in that you know your characters have you know, character powers and stuff, but this is like an active time battle mm -hmm. kind of system. You're not taking oh. it's not okay. your turn then my turn. It's actively going on all at the same time. So you get like three lanes essentially, and you put down a card, which is usually like a character. Uh, let let's say Ken for example. He's got two power, seven defense. Um, so you put Sounds him a down. Lot like artifact so far. <laughs> Yeah, and the it, lane stuff. And, yeah, the lane stuff. Well, Gwent had lanes kind of too, uh, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. And yeah, the the time battle will will kind of tick across, and once it reaches reaches your opponent's side, it'll do damage. Now, if there's if they've got something in that lane, it'll do damage to the card, or it'll do damage to them right. if there's nothing yeah. blocking it. So, and then then there's instant abilities and stuff. Uh, but from the outset, the art in this game is like exemplary. Like it, it's really quite fascinating like how good this it's, art do you is know like, is is it new art do you know or it is it existing such. art i have so, so much stuff. capcom art over the True. years that they could just and i've lean seen on. a lot of that i've got okay, a, lot of, a lot of that stuff okay. yeah All right. i've got i've got a lot of you know illustrated books and and they've gone back and they've redone some like I, i've seen a card that that's actually of original street fighter like it, it's oh. red hair uh, yeah, ryu yeah. like mm -hmm. punching sagat or something like that and yeah. it's from a different angle it's i've never seen it before All right. um so it's it's definitely original stuff they might have some you know, some 
carryover stuff. But yeah. for the most part, yeah, this seems brand new. And it's, they've got like a motion graphics quality to it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's still framed, but you know, then they've got like reuse gi flowing behind him or, or some shit like that. But uh, it yeah. looks incredible. Like it makes it really me does. want a full fledged Street Fighter in this style. <laughs> like, totally. I would love that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's surprisingly good. Uh, the music is good as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't hit uh, like you know like energy caps or anything like that. I'm not too far into it. Um, so like that- I, I've won my first battle. That's because my opponent uh, left. Nice. Uh, so <laughs> I'm gonna go out on top. But right now I'm gonna open up a card pack. Oh, oh shit. shit. Yeah, How's Whoa, this animation? that thing just spun around, and it's, there's six different things that I got. These surprise mechanics are, I think, if that's off a, the charts. I'm that's surprised. a Bison fighting Nash. Okay, Charlie, that's pretty cool. There's a Mega Man. Which Mega Man? I don't, I don't know. Mega, it's X, Ma- it's maybe. Mega Man. Oh shit! That's, I think that's a Monster Hunter thing. That's really cool. If you don't know, then none of us. Will. <laughs> right. I think that's Arthur. Arthur's cool. Yeah. Oh, that's that's uh. Uh, the zombie from uh, Darkstalkers, and then that might be another monster hunter thing. They're very small. <laughs> mm. They're very small. But yeah, I also got a Sakura's Spirit at one point, and I got a Sagat uh, times two. Um, Ooh, that, that, was, that, was, that was from a Ryu deck. He has two eye patches. Right. Yeah. Either way, I'm excited. No, it's as a Capcom fan, this is this is pretty neat. Yeah, I just uh, downloaded one. Just seeing out. all this. Uh, awesome art and then you know too it's it's it seems like a pretty fun hard game as well so does it seem like is there like so i'm thinking like active time battle but still a card game is right. it just like kind of a weird cross between like a clash royale take I, yeah on a card oh, game yeah a little now bit, that you yeah. mentioned clash royale you are waiting for your energy to tick yeah. down to throw a card up into the lane yeah totally yeah, yeah. and that's what it's doing here too is okay. your yeah your your mana as it were is mm-hmm. yeah, continually ticking up and like you know that can card cost four or something okay like that. so, so you you've got to wait till you okay. get yep. you know four or something like that before you can cast that All yeah right. you can't Certain, just throw the stuff out some really of the cards like, attack like multiple lanes Versus just one lane. Some of them are like, uh, some of the cards don't sure. e- even sit in a lane. You have to like target the actual enemy units instead. Hmm. So there, there's some variety in there. I think this is the closest we'll get to Capcom versus Capcom. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I want for that day. I want to check this out, but there's only been room for one game burning a hole in my oh, battery no. life. No. 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 Jan, what, you know. I, I do know. But Jan, you're betraying. Me, <laughs> you're betraying Dota. You were supposed to we, get into Dota and become a my blood best in, Dota blood friend. out. That's the Dota rules. Jan. We knew that I was on the league side of this fence from the very get go. Remember Tuscar? Yes, I remember Tusk. <laughs> he's not a panda. You? He's not a pa- He's a walrus. I've learned that. I felt embarrassed. I felt betrayed. And then so I left, went you left with the, the Yordles yeah. that I knew what oh. they were. <laughs> Triss is cool. Man. Poppy. Yeah. Oh, God. But Dota Underlords, I was really mad for a second because I couldn't find it on my phone because they changed the app icon. Oh, yeah. Windrun I think they there, changed man. it like three times yeah. already. They're changing right? it a lot. Yeah. They're, well, they're, so they're patching it every week and then some. Like, yes. they have a dedicated Thursday patch every week and then they're also doing like bug fixes and stuff. Okay. Where they, I, I, I've got to, I've got to applaud Valve on being like very vocal about this game. They're like, I, I, I we started to see it a little bit with Artifact um, of just like, e- even before the Artifact happened. Yeah. Uh, they were out there on Twitter talking about it. They were fairly open about it. There's just interviews and stuff. Like, I, I like this approach because as a Dota player, as a long time Dota player, like, they're, it takes like a lot to get even a pip from Valve sometimes on just like just here's a here's what we're working on like any here, any kind of update any kind of human interaction from yeah. the people working on the game yeah, yeah. and so I, I will say to their credit they've been very active on on Twitter and, and other places Reddit um, talking about the changes they want to make um, stuff they're testing hmm. but yeah I've been playing a lot of Dota Underlords um, I probably play one to two games every day. Uh, I just had a real chill day yesterday where I laid out and was tanning out in the sun playing Dota Underlords. As you do. Oh my god, it was eating bad Chinese food. It was <laughs> it was uh, maybe one of the most sounds, blissful moments like of my a life. Mess. Uh, <laughs> it was like classic it was very, Monday. It was very bad. Yeah. Very good. But how's the team fight tactics side of this? I mean, you you know, obviously no mobile. So. Yeah, no mobile, which is a bit of a bummer, and that's stopping me from uh getting diving, too far into it getting yeah. too far into it but uh 
The thing they do differently that we touch on the quick look is that there's a drafting uh, system in it. So oh, no. uh, d depending on your standing in uh, health versus the other players, uh, there will be a carousel of characters spinning around that uh, the lo players that aren't doing too hot will get access to try and pick a character. Hmm. And then, you know, it'll tick, tick on until you get access to how or well you're doing. But some of these characters are carrying items which uh is interesting the part that team fight tactics does differently is that there's a lot of recipes for crafting items in the game oh uh, so you may want to get a character that you doesn't synergize well with your build at all because they have something that you're after so you just want to sell them immediately and get that sick item yeah the the cool thing about so each of the three main auto chesses handles items like very differently incredibly different um yeah. Underlords has kind of like after every neutral round, you get an item guaranteed you pick from a list. Uh, the original game is kind of like Teamfight Tactics, where uh, the neutral rounds have a random chance to drop an item. Um, but Team Time, Teamfight Tactics uh, has that random chance, but then also this drafting round where you can pick out the items you want. And the cool thing about Teamfight Tactics that I really like the way they handle it is um, every item can combine with any other item to yep. form a different item. So there's just. There's like, you know, eight total items, but that means there's like six, 64, 64 different. Eight by eight. Yeah. Math is. Yeah. 64 sad. different total items you can get. And it's not like Dota where it's like, okay, you need a ring of health, a ring of protection and a chain mail, and then you'll get a Vanguard. You have to like know, I mean, you can yeah, like, there's a wiki the that has all this well. information, mm -hmm. but you have to kind of know. Team by Tactics, it's like in my first few games, I would just get two items and put them together and it formed something cool. Like it, worked, it, worked it out, just yeah. worked. It I like the way they, they handle that item system. Yeah, yeah. I think um, that's that's going to be the part that inhibits me from also getting into it too much because when I was playing League, I would always have like a fact sheet or like some graphic queued up on like a second screen because I was I needed like the build optimum order. build yeah. of stuff. While in Underlords, you can kind of just coast by. I mean, sometimes I've just ignored all the items in general yeah. in Underlords because you can get by. But in Teamfight Tactics, you totally need to be going with an optimum build yeah. of item stuff mm -hmm. which eh. also something team fight tactics does differently which i like and which underlords have actually talked about their their testing is uh normally in an auto chess you're just getting randomly assigned another opponent and they're getting randomly in your board is getting right. randomly assigned mm -hmm. to somebody else but in team fight tactics uh you fight somebody else like you Directly. go to their board or they come to yeah. your board um, and then if there's like an odd number of people, they'll duplicate or whatever, just to like even it out. Uh, um, but it kind of makes the game feel more social. Sure. I guess. No, totally. It feels like you're actually fighting. It's, it feels like PVP instead of PVP. As opposed to just like eight people in a row playing a slot machine. Yeah. Which like, that's, that's the, the feeling I get playing underlords is just like there are eight people playing this game and we're kind of competing but not really yeah if you get down to the last two or three then yeah. maybe you can start to like position around another person but it's like such a minimal part you're mostly positioning mm -hmm. for yourself yeah mm -hmm. um I, I do like that in tft honestly i feel like at this point if tft had a mobile i would be playing that I, it's hard to say if i would be playing that over underlords but i would at sure. least be playing that as well as yeah. underlords hmm that's really the only thing holding me back because uh, the, how, the, the how, positive side of Underlords, though, is that they're constantly communicating what's going on and it's very clear versus TFT. You kind of have to be a little bit more on top of it, like your own gold production versus other players. I mean, the health stuff, that's completely fine. But sometimes you want to make sure your income is uh, steady your, compared to your opponents. Have you gotten a sense for um, how long TFT games are averaging for you? Uh, I have been going at 20 to 30 minutes okay yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. underlords it's still going up to, upwards to 40 plus for me yeah i feel like it's gotten a, maybe a little uh, faster but, okay and, and they talked about um when they talked about that 1v1 testing that 1v1 stuff they said that that would re drastically reduce i imagine game oh length. interesting yeah um, and then, that seems to me that's the the thing that makes this like kind of a bad mobile game and sure. a lot is just like geez i like that's a long time yeah, it's a uh, long time. If sure. you are playing bot matches, it does you can do turn based right. stuff. Yeah, and so, you can you can so you can pause it and walk away yeah, and stuff. Yeah, but which like is that's neat. you know bot matches seem like they're there for you to kind of learn what you're doing. I don't totally. know that I would do that on a, on a regular basis. Just this morning, uh, I haven't gotten the chance to play it. Tencent 
put out theirs. Chess Rush. Oh, fast. <clears throat> no. Excuse me. Chess Rush. Fast and Fair Auto Battler. Um, fast and Fair. And I guess That's their selling point is matches only take 10 minutes. Okay. Which is like, if you're going to have a selling point, that's, that's a, a, yeah, I, you know, that, that's a, a, that right now with where we're at with these games that are so in flux, like that's kind of a key differentiator, right? Yeah. If they can be like, hey, this game's fucking way shorter. I'm like, all right, I'll give it a look. I mean, I won't give it a look, but someone will. Smooth <laughs> and stable. These are, these, <laughs> these are their features. They smooth and stable. Log in straight away. Experience a more stable and smooth auto battler game here at Chess Rush. More stable seems like a really <laughs> shitty thing. Yeah, because like, really shitty. Those games aren't unstable, are they? Underlords no. used to have a problem, okay, uh, but they've gotten much better. Right. Yeah. Um, Ten plus minute matches. Don't have forty minutes for a game. There you <laughs> go. Try our turbo <laughs> mode. No more pay to win. Money cannot buy victory in our game. Only strategy. Only happiness. Matters. Money can only buy happiness. If you have five <laughs> happiness, a uh, social game with no boundaries. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no social boundaries. Finally. finally. Uh, so I'm going to give this a shot. See if it's, <laughs> see if it's any good. Yeah, I probably what's that? Wait, what's that called? Chess Rush? Chess Rush. That's a Chess Rush. Chess I feel rush. like Chess that machine, rush. that then name came out of a machine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like an algorithm generated that and was like, what's the two hot words here? Chess. All right. Rush. Rush. Got it. Got it. Frontiers. Chess Saga. Call in yeah. Rush. Um, Game of Chess. Speaking of mobile games, Doctor Mario World is out now. It was I th- that it, it, just came yeah, out, yeah, that it? just came out. I played like the first three levels um, as we were getting ready to do the podcast, and I don't know that I'm playing any more of that. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. like it had a real like you just see a bunch of energy meters, and oh. you see where it will start to tick down, and it's like a level based <clears throat> take, like it, it's preset boards of really? which i guess actually yeah. dr mario was was kind of yeah you know, it, it, it totally was that was, but yeah. it, it was yeah. instead like of it levels, being yeah. falling blocks and more like that kind of like here's a take on tetris mm-hmm. it's more like you're flinging capsules up at the that's interesting yeah it's because it, i think just ergonomically it probably makes more sense for you to do the controls at the bottom of your phone than at the top yeah totally uh, and so you're kind of making adjustments on the fly but you can kind of fling multiple capsules out there at the same time mm-hmm. and they will just fall at a set rate uh to kind of get rid of the the viruses and stuff but it, then it pops out to an overworld menu and yeah oh, weird. As, as i started seeing like there there was already a purchase in there that was like pay x number of diamonds for unlimited energy for an hour and i was like okay that's oh, that's oh, i see yeah. what's going on here it just had the look of a it i mean honestly it has the look of like a, a mobile game from kind of a while ago really i feel like mm-hmm. that that energy mechanic you don't see as much of it these mm-hmm. days because no. the energy meters were so uh, disliked by players that they found different ways to kind of gate access and limit limit playtime and all the other stuff. This just yeah. seems like that. Also, it just seems it doesn't. Uh, most of Nintendo's games, I feel like when you launch them, they've tried to be like, "Hey, sign into your Nintendo account and get some stuff." Right. Uh, and maybe that'll pop up eventually. Like I said, I only played the first three or four stages, mm-hmm. so it wouldn't even let me link my Facebook account. It was like mm-hmm. there was a lock over it. Oh and wow. other, Some of the other stuff. So, so but you think like, eventually. It would- I wonder, well, yeah, yeah, the Facebook thing is at least in there, just yeah. locked, but I didn't see anything for Nintendo account linking, which okay. seems like that was the whole point of their thing, was to like, hey, yeah. we want you to use your account and all this different stuff, and uh, I, don't, I don't know, uh, but... Strange. It had the music, though. It did. It had yeah. the music. Yeah. So there's that, but I, I don't Where know. That's that? My initial impressions from playing the first three stages and downloading it was, I don't know that this is something I want to play any more of. You start talking to me about energy meters and stamina and shit like that. Yeah, I'm just I'm like, out. oh, no. Yeah. I want to play a video game at my own pace. Thank right. you. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I can, you know, if that's a long time at once and, yeah. and, or if it's once a day, like I, I don't want to have to think about that sort of stuff. Yep. That's not great. Um, speaking of Mario. Speaking of Mario. You've been making some Mario. I've been making some Marios. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you guys talked about Mario Maker last week. Right. Um, some of the, the disappointments and, and some of the nice things about it. Uh, I have to say, as somebody who didn't play Mario Maker 1, mm-hmm. who didn't own Mario Maker 1, that is maybe one of the greatest sins of my gaming <laughs> career, honestly. Like, I feel like I missed out so much on just the novelty of it. Like, I'm coming to this as a first time Mar- We We've done streams and yeah, stuff, but yeah. I've never really, like broken into mario maker i'm sure there's plenty of people out there who like never had a wii u and totally this yeah. is their first mario maker 100%. experience but also like the tech 
like people's fucking level tech yes. oh, skills yeah. has as is starting from such a higher point uh than it did That's first what time I out. I kind of wanted to ask is like how does like how do you how would you feel the lo- offering of levels of Mario Maker 2 just in general from the public compares to Maker 1. I am having a really good time. Like I have mostly been playing levels. Like I made yeah. a couple of levels and like I kept telling like oh I should start on a third and I was just like Ugh, no, I don't I, and just never got around to it. Um but I have been playing a lot. I've been going to like the new tab and just playing new levels that hadn't been played before. Yeah. Um and looking at popular levels and seeing some codes being thrown around online for for interesting ideas and so I've mostly been playing a lot of that stuff and there's just a lot of really clever shit out there. Yeah. My my favorite thing to do right now is search the puzzle tag. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and then sort by popular and then just go down a p- couple pages like some of those mid-tier ones. Um I played like one that was a mini golf. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. And it was basically you had to launch a shell through a gap. Uh, and it was nine holes, and each of the holes had oh. different things of like how do you time it, like what things you have to dodge yeah. with it. That's cool. There's just some like like we played um, on the stream. We did the pong one. Yeah, um, that was cool. Like there is some really innovative, cool stuff. But I just there's something about this game that it's just not living up. To, I I personally think I overhyped it in my mind. Mm-hmm. I was ready for like this to be just top to bottom, an incredible experience, like personal, probably like I was ready for this to be like top game of the year candidate. Just like, cause I fucking love Mario. Yeah, I yeah. play Super Mario World every year, once a year. And I have been, I love Mario, I, all the Marios. I love all Marios and I love the most of what I've experienced in this game. But then like, this weekend was the first time I really tried to give that versus mode a shot. The versus mode is bad. It's, it's, it's just it's it, not only bad. It's it just like doesn't rage work well. Juicy. It's yeah, and because it's, you, it's frustrating. You can see it, yeah. what a good version right. of it could look like. Mm-hmm. Like it's at best kind of laggy. Like I've never right. had a game that oh, gross. wasn't a little laggy. Yeah. Mm. I've had some games that were unbearably laggy where the screen counts down three, two, one, and it doesn't even release the gate because the countdown isn't tied right. to the lag. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then half of the courses I play on, you're literally right next to the flag. It's like people who make a course that's just like literally no obstacle. And you have no way right to here. pick a level or anything like that. You, you just can pick rate multiplayer. It at the end, and, yeah. But who knows if that even like does anything. Hmm. Um, and that then sucks. like, there's, you know, uh, stuff like, like Mario Royale, that fucking browser game that yeah. is, is back in some form, uh, out there like that could run better than this in some cases. And that runs in a fucking browser. And like, they, they like some of the physics is just off a little bit by mm. the nature of them having to make things playable in all three, but like, like the, the, so I'm I'm not like very good at it, but I I like to once in a while dip into the, like the Kaizo mm-hmm. fucking shell jump bullshit. But yeah. it's like it's bad in this game. Well, it's so it's it's not it's not the Mario World physics one for one, right? No, you know, it's, not. It, it's it's kind of a hybrid, or it's it's closer to the new style stuff. Yes. And so they they map the those physics back onto the older graphical styles, right? Which can feel weird, but I I got over that. Um, you have to get used to just like, hey, this may look like a thing you know, but it doesn't quite play like that. Yeah, uh, I, I got used to that in general, but I feel like the the stuff that I'm coming to, the like really challenging stuff, so specifically, I just can't. Like that, it, it'd be like like it's almost like going from like like a, to a Smash game to a different Smash game, where it's like, oh, I have just like these. Small oh things. sure, like your muscle memory is not is like mostly there, like, but it's just off enough to actually. Devoted so make much time it. Yeah, yeah. to nailing down the the feel of this, and then it looks like the thing, but it doesn't actually play like the thing. And I honestly, I think the tagging system kind of sucks. Like, I'm, it is better than the not no system that they had before, agreed. I guess. But there's not but enough there's tags. Like two useful tags yeah, in there. Exactly. Like speedrun and puzzle are, I feel like, the only tags I'm ever searching for. It's stuff that's like, it, it, like that's the funny. That's funny because like the the level tagging and being able to write that additional text on a level is that's like very, so huge compared to what the huge. first game had. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. It's still not. It just goes back to know, that thing of like. I can imagine a perfect Mario Maker 2 in my mind yeah. after seeing 
Absolutely. the Mario Maker with two we have. I still think it's a good game. Yeah. I still think if you like Mario, you should get this game hands down. But like, it's just and it's, it's, it's still the network services like. side. It's it's the yes. like, hey, how do we build this game for humans to actually interact with it and play it? Yes, it's the menu design. It's the tags. It, it's all of that stuff. Just seems There's, and a little bit of stuff with the maker side of it. Yeah. Of just like, I don't like that. I can't use. So I use controller to build mostly. I use a docked controller style. Um, I really hate the fact that I can't use controller style on portable mode. I have to use the touch screen. That's right. crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't, I don't, and I don't have a stylus. Like you found a stylus eventually that it worked for you yeah. and I'm I use my finger a little bit if I need to, but it's just like, let me use the A button to place a block. Like, why can't I do that? It's f fucking That's bizarre. Strange. It's yeah. The, they've made a lot. So the, I guess the only thing is since, so before release back at E3, they did confirm that they would patch in like a play with your friends mode for the multiplayer. Yeah. And if you look at the arc for Mario maker one, the stuff they added to the game post release, like there was a his there is a history there of them making that game better. Okay, uh, but they mm. didn't get all the way to where you want by the end of it either. Yeah. They added parts, they added cool stuff, um, but like it was still like, hey, here's this kind of like bookmarking website that is a like third party external thing for like, hey, you saw a level code that you want to try, but you're not sitting at your switch. You need to save that level code or bookmark it or do something with it. Like someone built a third party, you know, like there's there's other stuff for that that had to get built and. The idea that they didn't build something better for like the social experience of this game of like, hey, I saw someone post a code on Twitter. I want to play it later. Or, hey, I want to get this out on Twitter and, and, and all, all that other stuff like seems like it should be way better. Uh, it's another Nintendo game with no f actual friends list integration yeah, with the Switch, which is just that like, sucks. dumb. I wish there was I wish there was more discoverability. Like it's easy for people like, you know, you and me and Dan to just get out there on Twitter because we got a bunch of followers and be like, hey, here's a level I made, check it out. But I want to, I like, and there's like the top creators. You can like right. go there. Yeah, yeah. But there's nothing good for like the people who are just like, like I'm sure there's people out there who are going to buy this game today and make some really fucking kick-ass levels mm -hmm. that I have a 0% chance of seeing. It's why, it's yeah, why they're why never going to surface. Like, yeah. I'm spending most of my time playing levels that are in the new category, specifically yeah. to like look for new levels and like, well, maybe if I can like them, maybe they'll maybe someone else will get served yeah. it someday. And like you can uh, go to Reddit, there's communities out there, there's Discord Yeah, and I stuff think that's to, that's kind of the like, thing is is like I for me it's never been about like, hey, I'm going to post this so a bunch of people play it. Yeah. For me it's always been like I want to like I it, for me the fun was I made that level and then watched you play it when yeah. we did that stream last Wednesday. Totally. And like that was what I wanted to get out of that level is watch someone fall for or be <laughs> smarter than the fucking stupid shit in that level. Right. And it's like great, cool. Uh and then when it comes to making levels like if I want to make levels that like got played a lot, I would make try I would try to make good ones. Yeah. You know that like are maybe a little bit more like regular mario levels that's what i've started doing which is too. like fun but also like that that's an interesting exercise because you start to realize like real mario levels are usually pretty simple in a way that is like suspiciously hard to duplicate yeah without just duplicating it yeah and i feel like i've never been able to match which you know whatever hey they're the fucking mario games guess what people that they're made well those designed, levels yeah, like, yeah. There's some of the best games ever made. Yeah. Like, no wonder me, a fucking <laughs> idiot, can't make levels that are as good as those. Um, so, like, I, I'm... But I'm getting different things out of it. Like, one of the the level styles I found, which I wish they had a tag for it, uh, is these, like, 20-second speed runs, which are not yeah, usually, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, super difficult. It's really just a trial and error thing because there's really only one path through the level. But it's this fun... It's almost like the, the Trackmania press-forward style of stuff. It's not automatic. You still have to play it and hit jump. I've seen actually way fewer automatic levels. Like Me too. The first game was just rotten with those. And there's mm -hmm. even a tag for it here. The one time I got served a t uh, level that had the auto Mario tag, it was a car level. And yeah, I still had to push forward. I still had to drive. I still had to control it, which huh. that's not an auto Mario level at no. that point. Well, um, it's an auto Mario. Well, it's an auto, mm -hmm. it's an auto Mario. Um, like a car. Yeah. But like it, it's a lot of levels, the, these 20 second levels that, uh, that are on the most popular list in a lot of cases are like just one path through a level and everything is timed such that like you will finish it with less than a second to spare and all of the jumps are tight like oh, i have to jump up and throw this pow block up yep. to clear the path ahead but i'm landing just as the pow block hits yep. so these flowers are getting blasted aside and a lot and, of them will even have like coin trails they'll just yeah, like it's, it's tell not, you like, yeah here's it's not a mystery jump, it's like, just like here's an execution task for you yeah uh and and it's really cool to watch that unfold because people are coming up with 
like exciting ways for those to unfold. Yeah. And, and I'm liking those. And I'm uh, fucking here making another snake block level. I will buy I will buy I've class learned, snake block I levels. I learned I've learned I'm going to make a fun snake block level. I'm gonna do it. This I want it. airship themed. <laughs> oh jeez. Then you've already fucked. Uh I actually did kind not of... auto scrolling right. at least. All right, okay. Um yeah, so I I don't know. I, I think there are just like a, a handful of different level types that I'm I'm having a good time with, and and I've been enjoying just playing it and seeing what people are coming up with. Yeah, but at the same time, yeah, it's it's not when Mario Maker One came out and everyone was kind of starting from zero. You saw a lot more levels that just looked like regular ass Mario levels, and you saw a lot of really bad levels. And over time, that sifted out, and and you know people started, you know, climbing the ladder. They added that that super expert mode in the the endless challenge or the, it was the hundred Mario thing back then it didn't launch with super expert Todd oh. doubted expert. And then they were like, Oh fuck. Like people are assholes. We need <laughs> this new tier, uh, for people that are assholes. Um, and so that's the sort of thing they patched in that I, I hope that they are looking at how people are playing the game and going and that they go beyond just like, Oh yeah, I guess we'll make it so you can play with your friends. Mm. It's like the net code sucks. Yeah, uh, but also like at the same time, like I don't necessarily want to play multiplayer in that game at all. Um, so it's like if they get it to a place, I'll fuck with it. But it's just not why I'm there. So like I, I'm really there to just like if someone uh, made like a level that was a, a representation of the trolley problem, <laughs> <laughs> and it was really exciting. It was not a hard level, but it was like just this hilarious Did little you pull thing. A switch. Uh, you pull a lot of switches. Uh, it's like just over and over again, you're yeah. choosing who lives and who dies. <laughs> uh, and I killed every Yoshi I could. Um, and and I think that's fun. Like, I, I think I could... I, the When the multiplayer for me was working the best, and it was still unenjoyable, was like these big kind of puzzle levels mm -hmm. where we all just like split off and we're all just trying to like figure out where to go. Oh, yeah. I liked yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and I hope I I hope we can get to a place where that works well. I I, I wonder if it's because so many people are playing handheld Wi Fi. Yeah, I wonder. I, oh. it is, or if it's just it's just bad. Like, yeah. I, I don't necessarily know that you know because well, no one is even people that are docked are still probably playing Wi Fi because yeah. no one went and bought the dongle to. I bought the dongle. Well, mm. enjoy your dongle. I will enjoy my dongle. Gross. The privacy of my own home. Um, and there's still no way to like view a replay of a level, right? No, there's oh, not. Yeah, it's, no. This is sort of stuff that like if they just took this, like if, if yeah. the multiplayer in this game was literally like a server based, if it was just Trackmania time attack mode where you load up a level and this level is going to be active for the next seven minutes and you're going to run this level as many times over as you can over, to yeah. get your time down. You can see the ghosts. Yeah. And you see the ghosts of other people playing. They're not in your world. You're not no. fucking them up. But, like, you might learn, like, oh, he's jumping up there. There's got to be something up there. Yeah. Like, if they just built the track... There you go. If they built the track mini time attack mode and put that into this game... As that would be a games, yeah, as this with, could have yeah. been a lot better if they if just they did what track mini had done. If they had done what track mini had done, they would have a proper video game on their hands. <laughs> a proper eSport, even. Because track mini eSports <laughs> still exist somehow in some part of the world that is not this one. The completionist is out there demanding that they make this more eSports yeah, viable. Exactly. No, there's, there's someone at dream hack right now. There's some dream hack happening somewhere yeah. and it's four in the morning and they're listening to rave tunes and playing track mania. <laughs> base hunters. there. Yeah. Base hunters. there. Yeah. fucking, they are drinking energy drinks. You've never even heard of. Oh, wow. That's the life I want to lead. And if they could make Mario get a little bit further in that direction, maybe they'd have something. Maybe. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I'll keep, I'll keep, I, I I wonder how many more levels I'll make, honestly, because uh, I just haven't really had any like solid ideas of just like what I want to do, and yeah. I don't I don't want to just sit down and just like fart something out, uh, which is like the the two levels I did make was just like oh, I'm gonna make something to make something, yeah, and made them was like yeah these are kind of fucked up whatever, um, and yeah I don't know I'm having a really good time just playing stuff. My problem and, is the opposite where I have so many different ideas that whenever I start one, mm -hmm. I get like a little of the way into it and then quit out because I want to do something else. Yeah. And then I just mm -hmm. like, I have like six active levels that I'm trying to finish. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 it made me think of when we were, uh, before the announcement of this game and we were talking about like stuff we would like to see from a Mario Maker 2 and kind of one thing that I kept remember us mentioning was like being able to create a world. Yep. 
I'm thinking about that now and just being like, I can't, I sometimes have trouble with like a level. I will, I would have never been able to make yeah. all, like eight levels yeah. that are all themed together. <laughs> it's just like in or the like, same style. Yeah. Like the, could you sit down? Cause you, could you sit down and make like 32 levels? <laughs> a Super Mario Brothers length game, hmm. you know? Yeah. If I was like, and and keep a theme across them in such a way or an escalation of difficulty that is like sensible and logical and fun. Like, Over the course of like two months, maybe I could do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Once. Wrong. Yeah. Maybe. Uh yeah. It, it, I, I'm I'm having a good time with it. But it is yeah. Fun. It, and I and I got that uh, hoary D pad. Yeah. Uh which yeah, as, I've got as one. Jason yeah. said, it is mushy, but better than the default. Uh that's, that's pretty accurate, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um and I still have to return my broken one because mm -hmm. Amazon shipped me a broken one first. And if oh, I don't send it. it back to them, they're going to charge me 15 bucks. Oh, no. I know. I'm just using the regular old Joy-Con. I can't with the separated button oh, D-pad. I just, I just, I, how do you I do? Can't. I'm mostly, do actually, you use the analog use the stick? stick? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. That's it. Oh, my God. No wonder you're like, oh, man, I don't like the way this game feels. Yeah, no shit, dude. Well, you play with an analog stick. No, I'm, <laughs> I like the way the platforming feels. It's just one specific thing in there. Yeah. I'm actually mostly playing docked with a. Actually, no, I guess it, it's been pretty split. But like when when I'm when I'm docked, I'm using a pro controller, and that's been fine, even though that D-pad has its own issues. Um, it's been okay. Uh, that's video games. Yeah, that's all yeah. of them. That's all of them. Wrap them up. Why don't we take a break and we'll come back with uh, news and we'll talk about upcoming games for the rest of the year and your emails after this. All right, here we are. We're back. We're back. We? We're back. Oh, yeah. I'm back. That's right. I like the Ghostbusters 2 soundtrack. We're back. By Bobby Brown. Let's get into some news. The Stranger Things girl? Yeah. Yo. Yeah, she, 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 had, a, she had a track on yep. the Ghostbusters 2 soundtrack. David Harbour's shirt this season. Mm. Wags. Mm. <laughs> Fucking fire. I hear people are, like, not liking the I thought it was third neat. season of it. It's... it's Pretty good. Well, I like people okay. really like the first season, didn't like the second season, and now yes. people are mixed here. Is that is that the, the sure. take? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like this just I thought season two was fine, but Yeah. Hmm. Uh and this is a little bit better than two for sure. Okay. okay. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Ranking of seasons. Yep. Of show. Number one, fall. Number two, winter. Number three, no. spring. Last place no. with a bullet. Get out summer. Of here with that. Summer is a poopy month. A poopy month? Three months. <laughs> Depending on where you live, every month is a poopy month. Yeah. Uh, not a ton of news. We're kind of in the middle of this summer season that I've just heard so much about. Boo! Not always a ton of game news. Where it's, it's that window between, like, everyone just announced a bunch of shit at E3, mm -hmm. and then you've got that mix of, like, Comic-Con, Gamescom, and PAX kind of looming... Uh, Comic-Con, not as much of a game place as maybe it was five, sure. five years ago. The super friends to the Justice League of E3. Yeah, exactly. That's, yes. Pre <laughs> yeah, I mean, God, I can't believe that no one has ever thought of that before, but you've 100% <laughs> nailed th this relationship. Um, but there is some stuff happening, like Cuphead. Yeah. There's a show. Ooh. They're doing a show for Netflix. For not, of course they are. Yeah. Uh, not a ton of information out there. Uh, no date other than uh, they're trying to keep the same vibe of the game, according to an IGN interview uh, with huh. the creators of Cuphead. They're saying it's not a little kid's cartoon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and King's King Feature Syndicate is involved, which is crazy because they're the Popeye people. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. So like people oh, that have roots in... That style, some fucking old this ass, is some wow. weird sneaky yeah, news it's, tales. It's stuff. bizarre. Uh, you know, it's like, oh yeah, we're the we're the Betty Boop folks <laughs> and the Cuphead people. Yeah, oh, it's, do you uh, think the Mr. King Dice song is going to be in it? Uh, maybe they'll write. I would. I would think that they would write a new Mr. King Dice song, what? right? I mean, no yeah, way. probably. You know, you don't you don't just rehash that stuff, or maybe you do. I don't know. And then uh, also that DLC has been officially delayed until next year. Oh, oh. okay. Yeah. So the gotcha. the last little Cuphead DLC will be 2020 now. Which is not that far away, by the fucking way. No, no, like we terrifying. Are, yeah, twenty twenty has a real dark vibe to it. Hey, you know, who knows? Maybe it'll surprise us. We'll turn a lot of stuff around in twenty twenty. Hey, we should get a Netflix deal. 
Everyone seems. Everyone's to got a Netflix deal. We got to right. get a first look deal with Netflix, yeah. so I can like we're gonna go out there and ask people about buttholes and what they think butthole. about it. Yeah, rank ranking of buttholes. Ranking of buttholes. I saw that. Uh, also, they announced uh, four million copies sold of Cuphead. Of Cuphead, yeah, yeah that's a, that's, that's a good healthy number. You know, good. they put yeah. that thing out on Switch and yeah, yeah. Tesla's. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Teslas and switches, pretty much. Who they both run me. electricity, so I mean, right, right. Who's your ideal voice cast? I would almost say no voices. Oh, you got it. They got. I it. would almost say like you yeah. know like Legos or like old style like Tom and Jerry. Like, huh? Mm? Huh? Well, well, Maybe like other people talk. Like or King like Dice. instruments speak. King Dice definitely talks. Sure. Yeah. Right. Sure. And but like, do Cuphead like and Mugman talk? Like, I don't know that I would want that. I feel like they got to. They like, talk maybe they're the two characters that don't. Yeah. yeah. And everyone else does. I don't know. It's I, hard it's, to make a show around Yeah. That. A cartoon where yeah. your main two characters don't talk. Tom and, Tom and Jerry, and Jerry. Did it for fucking decades, man. Yeah, but that was like back then when they couldn't afford to like actually <laughs> what pay are you a talking voice about? <laughs> they couldn't pay to teach a cat to speak yeah the making a cartoon took it's 45 method, years baby. <laughs> 45 animators locked in a studio getting whipped yeah and there were some instances where they did speak yes right and that's yeah. Yeah. the movies they spoke yeah ridiculous They've uploaded all really? of Tom and Jerry to like the Tom and Jerry official YouTube, but mm. they're not playing them in like full length episodes. It's like uh, all clips. Oh no! And it sucks. Weird. Yeah, that's. Uh, Cuphead that is Billy West, nuts. and Mugman is Keith. Is it also uh, Billy uh, West. No. Uh, Keith or Sutherland. Okay. Okay. Who does Keanu play? He's Mr. He King plays King himself. Oh yeah. yeah, he plays He's himself. Yeah. Um. Will Shovel Knight show up? Yes. <laughs> Uh, undoubtedly. Um, speaking of get the shovel, GTA has been digging a oh, ditch God. lately. Oh, oh boy. boy. I saw that this morning. Yikes. This has been interesting for a little, I mean, whatever. This has been like fucked up for kind of a while now. Um, and it kind of stirred back up recently. Uh, the developer, someone at the publisher end for uh, Descenders, which is that downhill mountain biking game. Sure. That's, yeah. that's, that's cool as hell. It's cool. Um, kind of highlighting like, hey, G2A still sucks. If you buy a game from G2A, <laughs> you are still not giving any money to developers. They are bad people. Um, and so that kind of stirred back up again uh, as, as it does. And uh, that led to be like a kind of petition going around like, hey, if you really care about game developers the way you say you do, stop selling indie games on G2A. Right. Like, pull our games from your platform. And and how they, you know, there had been games pulled and then games that just went back up at random after after them saying that they would pull games. Oh, like geez. a lot of really shady sounding business uh, from, from the outside looking in. Um, the latest... Bit, so the, the, the gist that uh, is being put forth here is that uh, the, the claims being made that a lot of the keys on G2A are stolen right um and and the the method that that is being claimed out there um and i'm not a professional money launderer so this sounds like it would work just, but i but i want to be you do it for the fun of it exactly yeah, yeah. i'm an amateur yeah um mixing my bitcoin wallets <laughs> um they're basically saying like hey get a stolen credit card buy a bunch of game keys uh and then sell them on g sell them to g2a who then flips them immediately before the credit card gets reported stolen and all the keys get canceled. Oh, wow. So I guess it's like if the keys get redeemed and moved on and yeah. moved out before all that, other, before the chargeback occurs, then they're still live keys yeah. and they're still going through the system and, and all this other stuff. And then the chargeback hits and the developer and Steam, presumably, and mm -hmm. whoever, whatever store it's on, are being hit with that and they have to bear the financial burden. So it's right. like copies of the game getting out there, developers not getting their cut, Steam also not getting their cut or, or whatever storefront uh, the keys are being sold. I think it's, it's largely Steam. Gross. Um, and so that's Devious. that's been the 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 method that's been put forth as like, hey, here's how G2A is getting their keys, which then they have been like, no, -uh. um, <laughs> <laughs> I saw that tweet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the tweet basically was like, no, -uh. -uh, one slash question mark. Uh, and so the uh, the the next phase of this is that uh, or, or it, somewhere along the way here. Uh, some G2A sponsored streamers yeah. were like reading a statement from G2A being like, it's good. I love, I love G2A <laughs> and I'm safe. And uh, here's today's newspaper. Yeah. Um, good going. Pick your sponsors better. Um, Thomas Faust. 
this is this is kind of the 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 latest i guess in in this bit thomas faust is uh a writer for indiegamesplus.com uh he received outreach from g2a mm -hmm. saying hey uh we would like to run a sponsored post on your website which happens which happens yeah i, I get requests for hey we would like to run a sponsored post on your website all the time I look at them and chuckle and delete them. I did not get this one um, for the record. Um, and let me just call it this actual tweet because it's got screenshots of the email. And then Kotaku has seen the whole email and, and they've, they've weighed in on it as well. Um, my name is Adrian and I represent a global digital marketplace called G2A. Uh, our company is one of the biggest and most popular trading platforms in the world. It's a place where buyers and sellers of games and other digital physical goods meet to make transactions. I'm contacting you because I think your website matches our interests perfectly. Of course. And we would like to find out more about publishing and advertising opportunities that you can offer. Uh, which that's like the lead paragraph of every I've one of these emails practically pitch, yeah. is just yeah. like, we think there's some great synergy here. <laughs> if you run I Googled a video game websites yeah. and you were on we the really like page. Your, we really like your <laughs> content and would like to run a post about online casinos with a bunch of deep links to online casinos that we will then pay you for. Um don't call it a sponsored post. Like that's been the thing lately. Like most of them, it's like legally, oh, really? there's nothing stopping you from doing this and taking that money, but you would have to disclose, Hey, this is a sponsored post. Yep. Increasingly, I've seen more and more. They're just like one thing though. We wouldn't want this labeled as such. It's that's like, oh, fuck, the, the that's insane. That's to insane. Me. That's insane. Um, let me, anyway, this email goes on. Uh, it's, it's two screenshots here that I'm, I'm looking at, but so there's, this isn't necessarily, this is, this paragraph is attached to the previous one. Uh, at the moment, we're trying to improve our brand awareness, awareness and public image, especially among the indie and smaller game developers. Unfortunately, the majority of public does not understand either our business model or how we try to make sure our customers can safely purchase digital products. We want to make sure people understand we do everything we can to support the gaming community and that we introduce every possible method to assure every side is satisfied. We have written an... Un this is the next screenshot, so I don't know if there's more of the email that is broken up uh, that, that was cut out, but this is this is kind of the amazing couple of sentences here we have written an unbiased article about how selling stolen keys on gaming marketplaces is pretty much impossible and we want to publish it on your your website without being marked as sponsored or marked as associated oh, with g2a man it is a transparent and just review of the problem of stolen keys right. reselling below i attach an excerpt of the article if you want the full, full article just let me know um I would love the full okay. article, please. Oh, geez. Uh, Kotaku has, I believe, seen more of the article. Uh, let me <laughs> oh, scroll through wow. that here. The audacity to be like, yeah, uh, it's unbiased, but don't tell Completely them transparent. it didn't come from us. Yeah, right. So but also yeah. transparency Completely is number one. Right. So Nathan Grayson's written an article on this that has uh, some quotes from... Uh, some quotes from the email uh, with a sample of the article, the sample. Uh, and here's what he says. It says somewhat counterproductively that with some luck, you can probably sell one or two or even 10 keys on G2A without triggering any other security measures as all you need to provide to make an account is your phone number and a social media account. The problem, according to this article, that only mostly reads like it was written by a G2A employee, <laughs> is in collecting your money. To do that, you've got to provide your bank account info, which will apparently make you an easy target for the police. Quotes. Uh, Grayson then says, it makes an incredible leap to drive the point home. And this is another quote from the article here. It's like walking into a police station and pointing a gun at the officers there. Okay, you got in, but will you get out of there alive? What? Just like it. Uh, yeah. And, and then, you know, there, there's, there's been, you know, people that have claimed that they have been able to profit off of stolen keys on G2A and all mm. other stuff before. So it, it's just, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, G2A then got on Twitter and said that was we did not authorize. That was a rogue individual was, uh, in the company, and we have uh, we did not uh, authorize the this Mordhau course defense. of action. <laughs> oh. Ah, the old Mordhau. Um So that's a fucking mess. Uh, this this like key reseller stuff. It's not just this one company. There are numerous yeah, companies out the companies, there yeah, uh, in, in this business that. that are all kind of that all seem to be up to the same thing. Hmm. Um, but they're the ones getting the, the the brunt of it right now. And with stuff like that, like seemingly rightfully so, like, holy shit. We want to run an article without any attribution to us saying, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's unbiased. It's unbiased right. and completely transparent. Uh, the, the tweet from uh, G2A said that it was sent to nine outlets. So, okay. 
It, we, we didn't get it though. Uh, didn't we, we did not. Or I, I didn't. Maybe it came to some other. We have a you know oh, yeah. other kind of public facing email addresses that uh, that you know I don't necessarily see. Um, <laughs> and so I suppose it is it is possible that I'll that run it, it on did. my Twitter. Yeah. Just tweeting it out yeah. piecemeal on right. 280 at a time. Just, hey, guys. Yeah, hey, just guys. Just want to talk to you about key resellers. <laughs> they seem like they're on the up and up, and here's picture, why. Picture me sitting down on the stage. Yeah. <laughs> just turning the chair backwards. Yeah. Police stations. Walk in with a gun. Let's talk about it. <laughs> um, last story here. Uh, Nintendo says it's not falling behind in terms of technology for VR and network services. No, they said uh, you're falling behind. Yeah, they yeah, no you are. Yeah. You. <laughs> uh this comes out of the 79th annual general meeting of shareholders. Uh there was a Q&A. A lot of these questions are the Q&A from shareholders meetings are always ridiculous. There was one last week where someone asked Capcom, "Hey, how come the graphics in your games aren't better?" <laughs> Which is just like, I, what I, I find insane because they, I think their games have looked pretty fucking good lately. Yeah. 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 So the, the idea engine. that someone's like, your games look like shit. Also like, rude. Yeah. yeah. Also like, what are you asking? Jeez. The share it's price like would be higher of, if your games didn't look like trash. It's like, like a NeoGAF poster in there trying yeah. to yeah. start shit. Jeez. Um, so yeah, there's a quote from Miyamoto that's been making the rounds out of this that I will... Um, that I will just kind of uh, get into here. He was uh, like, no. And, and from uh, Furukawa as well. Um, there's an impression that, N there's a question. There's an impression that Nintendo has been a little slow to join large global trends like the mobile business and releasing games that use VR. The current global discussion now is of the entrance of major corporations into cloud computing and streaming games, as well as alliances between rivals in the are arena of cloud gaming. What are Nintendo's thoughts on these trends and how do you plan to respond? Also, how does Nintendo plan to respond to the change in communication standards from 4G to 5G? Which is kind of a weird one because that's like, it's not like the Switch supports 4G. Right. Uh, all that other stuff. Uh, Furukawa's response is like, we don't expect all games to be cloud games anytime soon. The technologies are definitely advancing. We see a future where cloud and streaming technologies will develop more and more as a means of delivering games to consumers. We must keep up with such changes in the environment. That being said, if these changes increase the worldwide gaming population, that will just give us more opportunities with our integrated hardware and software development approach to reach people worldwide with the unique entertainment that Nintendo can provide. Which is, you know, kind of a non-answer. Uh, Miyamoto, representative director and fellow at Nintendo. Just opens with it. We have not fallen behind with either VR or network services. Hell yeah, Fuck brother. you. Yeah. Um... And I guess the, the the quote that's been going around, I think, is that that quote specifically is very easy to take and then look at everything we just said about Mario Maker 2 and be like, dude, come on, yeah. come on, come on, little behind. come on. <laughs> um, but, you know, the, the question is really focused on the mobile business and VR and cloud stuff. Yeah. Not like, hey, your online infrastructure that you are now charging money for sucks ass. Um. Which I, I would like Rude. to see the answer to that. Well, yeah, that'd be like getting up and being like, "Yo, why do game? Why do games look like butt? Yeah, what the fuck is wrong with you? I played Monster Hunter. Those monsters look like trash. <laughs> Yo, why does Ryu look so shitty? Why are Ken's eyebrows above his? All right. That's put, that's about this banana. Point. Yeah, if someone banana. got up and said, "What's up with this banana hair?" <laughs> that's uh, he has the banana hair and tepin. Oh, I I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I gotta find out. But it I, also it's interesting. Uh, yeah, we have not fallen behind with either VR or network services. We worked on them from the very beginning and have been experimenting with what? them in a variety of ways. In that time, we have objectively evaluated whether they actually allow our consumers to have an enjoyable play experience and whether we can operate them at an appropriate cost. Because we don't publicize this until we release a product, it may look like we're falling behind. So basically something like, oh, no, we, we, yeah, we, we're staring we're not, at that shit all the time, but eh, fuck it. As a matter of fact, we're not falling behind, and no, you cannot see what we're working on. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> In regards to VR, we think that we have created a product that is easy for our consumers to use in the recently released Nintendo Labo Toy-Con 4 VR kit. It, it, they, that's hey, not a lie. That is not a, lie. a product it's, it's, that it's, is it's, easy it's, to use. That is a, Once you build it. Yeah. Uh, it's not easy to build. Nintendo consumers encompass a wide range of ages, including young children, so we will continue to create and announce products that can be enjoyed by anyone. Uh, and then Miyamoto gets into the cloud gaming thing. 
Uh, I think the cloud gaming will become more widespread in the future, but I have no doubt that there will continue to be games that are fun because they are running locally and not on the cloud. Uh, we believe it is important to continue to use these diverse technical environments to make unique entertainment that could only have been made by Nintendo. The number of people coming into contact with digital devices is increasing more dramatically than ever before. For example, Super Mario Run has surpassed 300 million downloads. The fact that we've reached such a market means the opportunities for us are greatly expanding, so we would like to work on a more and more unique projects. So there. And then uh, Koshioda, as a senior executive officer, kind of gets into the 5G stuff um, and kind of says, like, cost is an important thing. And, totally. And, you know, when it comes to weighing new, new technologies and putting them into hardware and all that other stuff, uh, that, which is basically like a way of saying, of, of not announcing much of anything. Mm -hmm. Um. I thought that was interesting because I, I, it's it's interesting with where VR kind of ended up or or has ended up so far. Like I don't feel like Nintendo is behind the curve by not having a proper VR headset. The same was I don't feel like Microsoft is you know is is behind for not having a VR headset on True. the Xbox. Right. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think there's a need for Nintendo to compete in those zones. Like they have such a they already have a niche carved out with the whole like portable to docked kind of gaming yeah. experience with the Switch and and it's something they've clearly looked at and you know like the, we we saw Miyamoto going into a room at Oculus to get demos at E3 like <laughs> totally. you know they, they've they've yeah. been they've been staring at that tech for a long time and I'm sure that they've got ideas about how they could use if it made sense to do that stuff but it probably doesn't make sense for them to do that stuff yeah. no and yeah. then with like recent news of them getting out of the sleepwear or like the what was it the medical quality of life stuff quality yeah. of life stuff like one it, there's another question later on in this that, that they specifically kind of touch on that a little bit more but yeah but. It, it's like clear that they are interested in doing what Nintendo does which is yeah making some killer first party video games on a weird console fucking up the internet a little bit yeah. but it's and then for people of all ages yeah. as well and vr is not exactly family friendly ready as of yet between the you know the cost of the barrier of entry you know the setup and everything just having space for it is yeah hard it would, for some families yeah, like, there's, there's still concerns about you know young children and their right. eyes yeah you know that sort of stuff as well old so. people don't want to put on a helmet Mm -hmm. No, grandma's not gonna put on tell a VR her. helmet. You gotta tell him, yeah. man. Yeah, this is where the porn is. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like where Nintendo is behind is where we we just finished talking about was like the the Switch Online stuff is. Uh, it's it's not a good offering. It's not. You know, it, it's cheaper. Like the best thing you can say about it is at least it's not as expensive as PlayStation Plus. And there's often deals. Like I saw there was one at uh, Walmart or Target or something for like twenty dollars for a year. Or something. And if you paid seventy bucks for Mario Maker, it came with a year, so you get get it for ten instead yeah. of twenty. And like, um, there are instant like for Smash, it works pretty well. Like there, there's yeah. it got to a place where like if both players are not like on shitty wi-fi it's it's yeah. serviceable you still kind of have to jump through a few too many hoops in but a lot yeah. of their games it's like, like they, they didn't like that. they didn't create a smart unified infrastructure for you know like what does the friends list on switch do really like it you can't you, you can't send messages game. yeah it lets you know if they're mm -hmm. online playing a game but most games like i can't say hey show me my switch friends list in mario maker so that i can follow their maker profiles mm -hmm. it doesn't there's no integration for that stuff at all yeah like that friends list is completely useless. Well, I guess like Smash has like a play with friends option, right? Yeah. Okay. So I guess in some games they have leveraged yes. it. Yes. Um like and then they they went down their weird rabbit hole with the smartphone app stuff for voice chat and then I feel like no one has talked about that since Splatoon came out. No. I feel like that's the only yeah. game that takes advantage of that. Like they didn't it? update it to have like bigger Smash support or anything, mm -hmm. did it? Yeah. No. So no. like that thing seems abandoned. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even in Pokemon, like, let's go Pikachu and Eevee, you can't challenge a friend to a match. You have to still input, like, a code and everything yeah. to find That's... someone. Damn it. It's, it's, it is just ridiculous. You mm -hmm. know, it's like they, they've built this thing for no good reason because they don't leverage it mm -hmm. the way they could. Yeah. There's no reason not to leverage it. You know, they, it's not like they can be like, oh, well, for children's safety, like, whatever. You already let me put them on a friends list. Totally. And link up my Facebook account and my Twitter account and all these other things that Nintendo doesn't oversee 
and ma- letting me make friends that way. But I, I guess you can't do anything with the friends, so it's not like they can message you and be like, hey, kid, what are you wearing? You know, and like nothing like that. So I just bizarre, just bizarre. I don't want to be put on a list when it comes to kids. No, absolutely not. Uh, another question here about subscription service stuff. Um, the question is, currently some game companies have developed a subscription-based business model, but Nintendo is lagging behind other companies in this regard. Huh. How will this business model be employed in the future? I really, I've, I'm fascinated that like these shareholders are saying like, how come you aren't doing EA Access or, or Game Pass? Well, you have or, to imagine they're friends with like the EA or, board. Or, yeah, or they're just like, well, they're shareholders. They're not, they don't play video games. No. They don't necessarily understand the space all that well. So it's immediately seen as like, how come you aren't doing this? Other people are, which I think the question is just like, is this something you should do? Right. Like I don't I don't view that as lagging behind either. I would imagine at the very least they want to know that Nintendo has thought about it and wants to hear their reason of why they're not doing yeah, it. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so the response is uh as follows then. And this gets into I think you know this is a little bit closer to what we were talking about with their online service being bad. Uh, subscription-based services are becoming common in all sorts of industries, not just the games industry. These sorts of services have already been implemented in the game industry, and it was even a popular topic of conversation at this year's E3. <laughs> Nintendo also offers the Nintendo Entertainment System and Nintendo Switch Online service, which allows members of Nintendo Switch Online, a subscription-based service, to play NES games. We believe that we need to further enrich these sorts of services in the future, Nintendo's policy is that we will consider whether each product we offer is suited to a subscription model as we expand our business in the future. Which is like a non-answer of just like, oh, we're totally, yeah. No, you can totally sign up. You can fill out this thing and then we'll let you play City Connection on the NES Mm -hmm. for 20 bucks a year. Sweet, right? No. Fuck you, man. City Connection's good. Not twenty dollars is good. No, not twenty dollars good. I could get a copy of City Connection for way less. No NES game that is worth twenty dollars a year. A year. Baseball. That's. Think of how much money that is now. For video games you can play for free? Yeah. Even f- motherfucking Super Mario, I would not pay $20. You would not pay $20 for Super Mario Brothers. No. Yeah, I guess not. I, but, uh, well, uh, but I did pay $8 <laughs> for versus Super Mario Brothers, the arcade game. Well, that was a mistake. Mm. Play it once. <laughs> With who? No one. Yeah, no, exactly. It's just, yeah, it's not. You don't have to. It, it's not. It doesn't have a versus mode. It's just right. no, this, the cabinets are all called that. Maybe <laughs> the Legend of Zelda. Maybe that's the only one I can think of. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm an idiot though, but I would do it for Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Also. Mm. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I, I think the. But would you do it for non Mike Tyson's Punch Out? Oh no. Mr. Okay. Yeah, Dream. Who's yeah. that? Yeah, you would have to pay a, a premium fee to get Mike Tyson's punch out. Yeah. Um which which makes some some sense in a weird way. Uh yeah, I, I think uh nostalgia like especially if you add the thing of like removed from nostalgia for those games, yeah. are any of them worth twenty dollars compared to today's games? That gets harder. That gets a lot harder. I do like City Connection though. Um and I've only loaded up that NES service like twice since I I signed up when Smash came out. I signed up for the online stuff. Yeah, same. And I don't think I've ever fired it up. I haven't yeah. either. I loaded it up yeah. once like about a week ago. Do you have to down? Do you have to go to the store and download yeah. it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, That's yeah. yeah. And if you're offline, you can't use it at what? Home. Yeah. Oh. You need to connect uh, to the service. I thought it would. Yeah. I don't know. I tried it in my hotel okay. room when and it just didn't, didn't have didn't any work. Wi-Fi. Okay. Yeah. Had you launched it beforehand, like once before? Okay. Totally. I just, totally. Yeah. I yeah. Any, any time, anytime you launch it, it does say like checking to see if you can fucking play this or not. Yep. And I've always been on the internet. So yeah, I guess I don't know. Um, so yeah, they're working on their subscription service. <laughs> I mean, at some point they will add, like that's They'll the question. Super Nintendo like, games. Will they add yeah. super, will, you know, will they add, will you have to pay more to play super Nintendo games? I think is what we were talking about a little bit last week with some of the stuff that they had been posturing and, and saying is, and if they no, like absolutely not. No. Like that's, I can think of a lot of super Nintendo games. I would pay $20 a year for which ones, uh, link to the past. Okay. Super Mario world. Oh. Um, super Mario RPG. Okay. I'm with you on that one. Hmm. Like the final fantasy six. Okay. I feel like like the, the the value propositions of Super Nintendo are 
exponentially higher for regular Nintendo. Games where you can like save and come back to, and it's like a Legend 40... of Zelda for the NES had a battery. Yeah. You held in reset and turned <laughs> off. And... That's what it has been kind of cool to see the kind of remixed versions of these games that are out there. Like, you know, yeah. like, like Kid Icarus or something like that. It'll have like, you know, like a like a pre-saved, um, like powered up. Or in like Legend of Zelda, you have like a powered up Link or something like that. That's it's, it's kind of cool. Yeah, I forgot like that they a, had that stuff. There's like a Tetris or like a Dr. Mario that's like, yeah. hey, we're starting on the last level of Dr. Mario. See right. if you can beat it. Yeah, uh, that's, that's it's, been it's interesting. save states. It's kind of, sure. in, in a lot of cases, but... Um, it's kind of cool to see N N Nintendo play around with some stuff that's been like pretty common in like the hobbyist emulation scene for yeah. ever. forever, um, forever, 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 ever, ever, ever. ever. No. That's it for news. Uh, no more news. No more news. Yeah. News ever. is canceled. That's right. We've canceled. We've the, reported. We dug everything. up some tweets from 2014 that the news did, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. oh boy, yeah, Huey it's... Lewis even won't talk to them anymore. <laughs> so we're pretty much halfway through the year. Here we're oh. at the start of the seventh month. Almost exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Um. So we thought it might be uh, fun to run through a list of games. They're due out for in the back half of this year. I think coming out of E3, it was a lot of like, oh, well, yeah, there's kind of some stuff coming out this year, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. But maybe all of it's come out already. Or, you know, I, th I think people were kind of back and forth on some mm -hmm. of that stuff. And, you know, we saw a, a handful of 2020 games get announced as well. But there were a lot of 2019 games. There were. I was surprised. Jeff, Jeff had me pull this list, and I was like going in expecting like, 10 games that I cared about. And not that I care about everything on this list, mm -hmm. but I was I was a little surprised. What's the one game you cut from because you 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 editorialized and cut a bunch. I what's cut the a what's the one game you cut from this list that you think people will be like, "I can't believe they didn't mention I really th okay, think I tried right. to include everything except like weird obscure anime stuff that people are going to care about that I yeah. don't okay. know. God damn I, it. I, I, I was going to say it's like definitely anime. it's definitely an anime yeah. game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Did you get the Peach Blast one? The Senran Kagura Peach. I think that no. might be out. I don't think or this very one's close out. To this out. is the new pinball one. I didn't put one. Million oh, Arthur okay. Arcana on there either. That's oh, on PC. That's out. Oh, that's out. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's why. God damn it. Smart. Very yeah. smart. Yeah. Thank you. So let's run through this stuff. I don't know. Like, there's there's definitely some stuff on this list that I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I would very much like to play this, but it, hmm, hmm. <laughs> July. Uh, they are billions uh, today. Today, yeah. Oh, uh, today. Soul Seraph, which is out tomorrow, is a quick look at that up on the site right now. Yeah, that's Act Razor. It's oh, it's pretty wanna, Act Razor. I want to mention that because because Brad's not here too. Uh, Soul Seraph. Uh, they made Act Razor again. So I think, I think he's mentioned that, that yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, but like Ace Team made it. Ace Team made it, wow. and there's kind of a tower defense element now uh, for the the overworld stuff. Huh, I can see that you're doing you're like dealing huh. with waves of enemies and building out to their places rather than just like doing a straight up building. And uh, the last thing I'll say about it, other than they just really nailed the act raiser stuff, it's it's funny. There's a lot of like good writing in that game, huh. which is pretty neat, and cool. it's cheap as heck. Uh, Blazing Chrome, which I think. Uh... I think yeah. they're, they're taking a look at that yeah. out east. That looks good. What is that? Because I just that's think a of contra. Oh, okay. All right. That's okay. That sounds interesting. Because I, I keep thinking of the book Burning Chrome, and I'm just like, I is this just like some cyberpunk thing? I don't even know anymore. I can't remember if it's three or four, but it's very much based on either contra three or four. Okay. Uh, Dragon Quest Builders Two mm -hmm. is yeah. out the twelfth. Uh, something improved of, upon that game. Yeah, I liked that first game mm -hmm. until it kind of wiped. It was like, okay, move on to the next area and fuck everything you built. I'm like, oh, all your progression man, is just like stilted, and yeah, yeah. Man, that stuff was a bummer. Uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance Three. Yeah, I want to play that. Yeah, I'm excited for it's that. It's been a very long time since one of those, <laughs> and I don't know that that's. I, I've played them somewhat recently, and I don't know that they've held up. To be honest, yeah. yeah, I mean, a Marvel arcade. Me, the Marvel Heroes player, will tell you <laughs> that there is room for a Marvel action RPG. Yeah, uh, but I don't know that what I've seen of this is necessarily. Make it my X Men Legends Two, mm. Age of Apocalypse. Yeah, what, what you, that'd be what? pretty good. Uh, Kill the Kill. Is yeah, at the end of this month, Jason. That's got the, me less excited for that game than I had been. Yeah, you thought it was an Arxis, like straight up like 2D I fighter. Knew it, I knew it was like not pure just 2D fighter because mm -hmm. I had friends with some people who have played it and they were generally positive on it with a few like trepidations. Okay. But the way you described it <laughs> as it's a, it's a 3D arena battler, yeah, brawler. which made me really upset. Which uh, anime is Kill a Kill? It's what? Kill a Kill. It's someone with their kids and they got powers. 
Oh, okay, okay, okay. She's got like big scissors. So the clothes, that, that it, lady has a lot of under boob. Yeah, that's, that's the one I know. It oh, is. it's the under boob anime. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that one. Okay, it's supposed to be really good. I just couldn't get over the under boob. Under boob. <laughs> I don't know that I'll ever be over the under boob. No. Fire but, Emblem Three Houses. That new Fire Emblem game is out this month. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so I guess yeah, there you go. Some stuff in July. Uh oh, Wolfenstein Youngblood is out at the end of the month. Oh, cool, as well. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Pumped for that. Yeah, that was uh, fun at E3. We and M- about Mutant Year Zero: Seed of Evil. Is that DLC for Mutant Year Zero? Or I didn't know if Mutant Year Zero had already come out, so I left it, it on there. It came out last. It year, came yeah. out. Yeah. Okay. So I don't. I'm trying to think if this is console version or if this is an update. I don't know. Uh, let's move on to August. Uh. John Madden heralds the return of video games on August 2nd. Finally. Uh, he will <laughs> smile upon us and allow more the, the summer to end and video games to return. Thank you. Um, Metal of Chaos is finally coming out. In America. Again, in America. For the first time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it didn't come out on the 4th. Play it again. They really messed it yeah, up. Yeah, this seems like time. that should have been a, a July 4th sort of deal. I, don't, I wonder. Um, Rad, that double fine game, that Microsoft product, Rad. <laughs> uh, Microsoft Rad. Which is the follow-up to Microsoft Bob. Uh, it's coming out on August 20th. Pretty excited about it. Life is Strange 2 Episode 4 out August 22nd. That's a game I have not heard anyone talking about. No. Compared you... to like Life is Strange 1. Yeah, no, yeah. Like, yeah. that's the first one. Yeah, man. It seems like it really fell I feel off. like even when we asked like East to have checked it out, they're like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, oh okay. Oh, what? Uh, uh, and uh, Control. Is yeah. out at the end of August. Oh, that's out this year. Uh, yes, yeah. Control wow. is almost done. Control Shit. is probably hmm. entering certification by now. It is probably just about wrapped up. Um, Excited for that. Yeah, I I really want to play Control. Uh, that's when I came, I came out of a from all mm-hmm. the E3 proceedings, going like, okay, Control is like one of the handful of games I saw that I'm like, man, I really want to see this. Well, didn't uh, they get the license for Alan Wake back? They did. This, yes, this we, last week. we we yeah. mentioned that last oh, week. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. last week. Okay. Um, yeah. Yes, they did. So maybe they'll do something with that down the line. I saw somebody theorizing about like an extended universe with several of the properties kind sure. of in could, yeah. one thing. That you could see that. Like the lady cool. from Control and Max Payne yeah. in a co-op shooter. No, uh, <laughs> Different powers. Barry's scenes. there from Alan Wake wrapped sure. up in Christmas lights Why not? screaming. Energizer batteries everywhere. <laughs> uh, World of Warcraft Classic is also out end of August. I feel like that's been something that as... <laughs> the date gets closer or as more details were found out about it and that beta happened. More people get into it the went beta. from like, oh, hell yeah! And, and into just like... Oh, right! <laughs> it was bad! Blizzard, you were right! We didn't really want this! <laughs> Thanks for doing it. The, uh, Wreckfest is apparently still coming to console. Oh, cool. Uh, oh. With a late August date. We'll see if that happens. It's been a while. That The game, I think, exited early access on PC. Did it officially Late out? last year, I okay. want to say. I couldn't remember. Yeah. Uh, and then they, at some point it was it was scheduled for release on console and then suddenly got pushed back. And this is the current date. Uh, Astral Chain, end of August. I'm interested in that. Could, yeah. Good. That, Same. That Blair Witch game, end of August. Ooh, also interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. God, that was such a fun trailer because the whole time we're like, <laughs> no, this Blair Witch ass looking thing up <laughs> on the screen. Oh, <laughs> it's Blair Witch. <laughs> All right. What are you playing in early August? Is it Gears 5 or Catherine Full Body? It's Catherine, full body. Both. No, choose one. Ah, I can't. This is our Genesis versus Super Nintendo. Yeah. Catherine does what Gears isn't. Mm-hmm. Um, Monster Hunter World Actually, Iceborne is also yes, please. You might not. You might not be a. You might Catherine, not, full body. The, I don't want to play Catherine. A lot of again. the li- I, and, and just a lot of the details coming out about oh sure stuff they yeah. have changed yep. is oh, a that's little right. problematic. Yeah. Sure, uh, to say. Uh, at least, yeah, yeah absolutely. About that. Yeah. Um, but even if it was just like, here's Catherine again, like I don't. No, I don't. I do. I, I do like multiplayer Catherine, Catherine and uh, the fact that I don't have to play through the story mode now to play it. Right. That is that'll be out a, a way and it has to just, online. Yeah. That's, that's cool. That's but... cool for that that community. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the Catherine community will be very yeah. excited. <laughs> they exist. They did. They totally they do. do. That's great. Um. Yeah, Monster Hunter World. Uh, Borderlands 3 is out the 13th. They put out some details uh, 
on stuff like fully remappable controls to support the adaptive controller. Also, that game's going to have <laughs> pinging in it. Like, it sounds like oh. it'll be like Apex-style pinging. That's good. Um, from, from reading their press release. I which... think any multiplayer-focused game should have that. Yeah. Some, some sort of non-vocal communicative totally. tool. Yeah, it. like, it's, it's so smart in Apex. Like, that, that seems like something that, that Borderlands will end up being, like, the first of many the, to... Hmm. to like crib parts Adopt of that setup. Yeah. Opinion started in Dota 2, motherfuckers. No, I mean in in first person. I mean in real video games, not Dota 2. Um, I mean, yeah, you could ping, ping the map wheel. and fucking like but the ping wheel. You could ping the ping parts wheel of the map that and, has like, the different things and that and mean Warcraft and shit. You right? click and hold the ping, and it's like attack here, defend here. You could do that in Portal 2, also. Yeah, there you go. Portal yeah. 2 co-op had that. Yeah, non yeah. and for the same reasons too. So yeah. there you go. They. Borderlands stole the Portal 2 thing. Gearbox and Portal Valve Land. just constantly circling in this nightmarish <laughs> way. Uh, Damon X Machina is out yeah. mid-September. Um, Still don't know what that is. Still excited about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Like, all right, yeah, cool, awesome. What is that game? Max. Uh, Max. <laughs> Destiny 2 uh, will be freed from the shackles of Battle.net and unleashed onto Steam on September 17th alongside the Shadow Keep DLC. Yep. Uh, my character will join all my friends on the PC now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm interested to see how they transition. How they transition, goes, like yeah. how Shadow Keep goes. I, I think that, you know, they're, they're still going to be kind of missing a piece until they can get proper, like, cross-play. Yes. Um... Because you you have to purchase the the content on multiple platforms if you want to play it there. Yeah, like it's you can play all the year one stuff, all the free stuff, whatever. But like if you you would have to buy the Shadow Keep stuff on two platforms if you wanted to play in both places with your same character. Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah. So that that's that's fine. Yeah, I feel like most people will be like me and just make one a one time permanent jump to wherever most of their friends are. Yeah, and, and, just, and like, everyone will probably stay there. there, and and hopefully that'll just be that. But in the event that like some people stick around on a console or something, or you, you it'd be nice. Yeah, like yeah, I don't have like, a PC. Like, like, like proper oh, cross play, play would us. be yeah would yeah. would be the ideal here. That seems like something that they will get to down the line. I hope so. I, that that just seems like something they would they would want to do, and and more games are doing it. So, uh. Give them another year or so. Uh, Link's Awakening for Switch. Yes. September 20th. Yes. Um, I was listening to that soundtrack the other day. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Contra Rogue Core. That top-down, that not Contra game that they announced. Some straight-up bullshit. Yeah. It reminds me of just like, there was like an era of Contra games on like the PS1. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Legacy of War and some other sh There's oh, like God. Neo Contra. There's like a couple. Bad of dudes. Contra bad dudes contra or something. Ba yeah. Like contra, contra bad dudes versus Dragon. No. It's, <laughs> they, there's just a handful of Contra games that were just like, fuck it. They're top down now. Like those bonus levels from Contra 3. And you're like, that's not. I don't know. Or like the. How. Mega Man did the same thing. The, the, the X. The jump from X whatever to whatever. When there was like, now you can like control Mega Man from the top. Who the oh, fuck wants to yeah. control Mega Man from the top down? I don't, I don't want to see the top of Mega Man's head ever. Gross. Yeah. No one does. Uh, well, the, then on that day, September 24th, you could be playing The Surge 2 instead. Oh, I forgot they were that. making a Surge 2. Yeah. And I'm excited looks, to check it out. Surge I think I saw cool. it last E3. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was looking pretty good then. Yeah. That game's all right. Surge was neat. It, was, yeah. it, it ended yeah. up on games with gold or you know it seemed mm -hmm. like there was there were ways for that to get out to people yeah that maybe cheap search nowadays, will. Yeah. i like the idea of just like cutting a dude's arm off picking it up and, and actually using it using yeah. it yeah uh code vein yeah late september okay along with uh dragon quest 11 s echoes of an elusive age a definitive edition the switch version of dragon quest uh but the same day fifa so you, know, you got to get your ultimate get team out of the way. Video gotta games. Got to get your ultimate team up to snuff. Got to start buying them packs. Start setting your money aside now. Those joyous uh, jubilees, mm -hmm. they're called. Yes, yes. As every time you buy a pack of cards, that's another joyous jubilee for you. Um, Ghost Recon Breakpoint is uh, leading off October on the fourth. October seems really barren right now for oh, really? when it comes to. The games you included, 
There are not many, but they are all, well, most of them are bangers. Right. I, I, yeah, I don't know the last time this list was updated. I tried to do a little bit of cross-referencing. Yeah, but... yeah. Yeah, so maybe some uh, dates are subject to change. Plans change. As they it say. seemed fairly recent because it had like Death Stranding and some yeah, other stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Ghost Recon. But, you know, like it, it's, you know, a lot of bigger games will hit in October, November. So a lot of the other games will get out of the way to September and stuff like that. So maybe that makes sense. Ghost Recon Breakpoint, October 4th. Call of Duty, A Modern Warfare in late October. Same I'm day. for that one. Medieval. That, that Medieval remake for PS4. That's still happening. The game, I literally don't know a single person in the world who asked for. You play as Trevor Montesquieu? What the fuck's that game? And Isaac. Skelly. Sir. Yeah, you play as Mr. Bones Jr. It's <laughs> uh, wild. It's even wilder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, The Outer Worlds is also out same time yes. looking at this. Uh, that game seems cool. There were some quotes from, I think, the, one of the writers on that about mm. just like, oh, it's not political, blah, blah. I was like, no. Nah, like, you're literally one of the quests. Actually, I, I, I cannot. I can't talk about the quest that I played in that. Anyway, anyway I watched a, a trailer of that the other day and it just, it's got such a fallout vibe. Oh, to totally. It. Yeah. yeah. Like that's, that's the game Obsidian is making. Yeah. Is like I know. A space sci-fi space game that is very fallout three, fallout four type. I wanna, of, yeah. I want a departure, I guess, but I want that. to me, I think the departure would be if they make a game that is of reasonable length and not broken. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the, uh, hey, that's, that's, that's the, fair. Uh, <laughs> like if it's like, hey, here's a tight twenty that works. Yep. Uh, that would be. I great. would be behind that. Yeah. yeah, I would love to just dip into one of those Give me and that play jank. it, finish it, and and be. I feel be like done. I feel like I just need as a person, I just need a certain level of jankiness from one video game a, or one to two video games a year. I just like need mm -hmm. video games once in a while to remind occasionally me, be fucked up. Just like, just hey just man, video games mods, are so man. fucked up. How do just get into Skyrim mods and load yeah. as many as you can. <laughs> Um, and solve the problem that way. Uh, just dance for the Wii. Out early November. Don't do anything else. Not, just... not the Wii U. Oh, oh. just the Wii. It's and the, the, and Stadia. The re the thing I saw about that is like there's tons of Wiis in like hospitals and nursing homes. Totally. And stuff like the, and... I mean, there are way more Wiis out there than we use. Yeah. So yeah, naturally you would you would continue it there because it probably costs you nothing to put <laughs> new music into that shell. And ship it out again, like why not? Uh, it's the same reason like FIFA came to the PS2 for a fucking decade or something, you know. Um, I think FIFA on the Switch might be getting like a legacy edition treatment, hmm. which is their code for not the current not technology, the current, yeah. <laughs> last generation's FIFA. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. So what else in November? Death Stranding. Yup. Strand gaming. Will be upon us this year. I'm gonna build some bridges. Yeah, uh, to your heart. Please don't. Uh, I like that you included the remake of Thirteen. <laughs> of course, dude. <laughs> David Duchovny's back. I don't know if there's new voice lines. Yeah, <laughs> but is is do you know for sure? Are they using his? Is he? I don't know yeah, anything I'm, about I'm the wondering. details of this game other than I hope it gets enough interest for people to get excited about Thirteen Two. Because that ends on a cliffhanger. Yeah, lightning that, and all that stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. She runs around mm -hmm. and does big summons, and you're <laughs> fighting the president's brother or something. Yeah. Jumanji, the video game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mid November. You can play as all your favorite Jumanji characters. Yeah. Okay, Jan, you got to choose here. Okay. Uh, November 15th, a very big day looking at this list. Oh, no. Uh, what are you going to play? Is it Jumanji, the video game? Uh huh. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, okay, or Pokemon Sword and Shield. <laughs> Son of a, mm. I know, right? Mm. Can I play as the Rock in Jumanji? Uh, it yes, is I set so. in that. You can play Jumanji as the Rock, verse. Jack Black, Kevin Hart, Hart. Mm -hmm. or the fourth person. Uh, oh, I like her a lot. Amy Pond, Doctor Who, Karen Gilly. Is that her name? If that's Karen a, that's a name. Of a person who acts. I don't yes. know if she's in... She's in Jumanji. Okay, oh, she's yeah. in Jumanji. Nick Jonas is also in Jumanji. Yeah, oh, yeah, shit. He's a, yeah. yeah. The best Jonas. So, okay, well, you and I are going Jumanji. Uh, great. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll play Star Wars. All right. Uh, no one will play Pokemon. No. Shenmue 3. There's not enough Pokemon in it. Y'all see that giant cake yesterday, though? Yeah. No. It's Was there dumb. A Shenmue cake? No, 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 no Pokemon. Pokemon. Okay, all right. <laughs> 
Mm. Um, it changes everything. Gigantamaxing. Wow. Sounds a lot like other mechanics mm. that they've ditched. Uh, Shenmue 3, people got pretty fucking pissed um, at that game for signing its like epic deal after running a oh. crowdfunding campaign on yeah. here's, a, here's a Steam key. And then I think Tim Sweeney or somebody got out there and tried to flip it around on Valve and go like, well, Valve doesn't let you give out keys to games unless you're being sold on the store. So but, uh, like that's some fucking... Oh boy! Some real yeah. bending of the fuck. Yeah, the it, epic it, it stuff is real. Get, it's growing worse. I think it's it's not like bad. Like the Shenmu thing is a unique case because of the crowdfunding promise of like you will get a Steam key and then like oh by the way it's now an Epic key. But like ever since they bought the Rocket League people and were just like really ambiguous about what is going to be the future of Rocket League. Are you going to still access that DLC and all that stuff? Like from that moment forward, I feel like their some of their business practices have gotten a little, a little more questionable. Sure. I, I think the Rocket League problem is one of messaging and, and they didn't have like a, a good, like easy to read answer to yeah. that question uh, at the time. But what they did say doesn't sound as dire no. It sounds like maybe they will want you to migrate to the Epic Store and that maybe oh, only, only new content will be available yes. uh, there as opposed to, you know, also on PC. But it seems like you could... Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I, I don't want to know. All right. I do want to know, but I don't, I don't want to say... I don't want to fucking <laughs> make shit up. Uh, Doom Eternal. Fuck November. Yes. Also, Google Stadia Founders Edition. Oh, yeah. Y'all ready for a console launch? <laughs> <Can't wait. laughs> of the Google Stadia? Um cloud launch right well I, we'll see how that fucking thing goes man we will that's, that's i know some people that around the, these offices are excited to test it out i think the thing is is that the technology works i think we're kind of past the 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 early hurdle of just like can this function people are like oh yes it can like yes you can play doom on this theoretically i'm s- uh, yeah yes i, I mean i still have there, there, is, the yeah, there, is, there is a scenario well they did at home beta stuff with assassins and other stuff like there is a scenario where this stuff works acceptably for a lot of types of games yes uh, i will want to see what a fighting game and a driving game looks like on stuff like this mm. in terms of just like yo i'm counting frames this is bad you know like like people will be unhappy right. at some level for me, it is really just that business case of just like, how do you use this with in conjunction with what the internet is like today mm. and what it is still likely to be like in November? I don't think a lot's going to change between now and then um, unless Google has been, like I think I said last week, building their own fucking secret internet. Right. Um, hmm. And yeah, this this is I, the other thing I think people got fucking bent out of shape about with the Stadia this week or today was uh confirmation which is this is pretty much what they said uh but not quite as hard uh, as as concretely is that it's only going to work with like pixel phones this year like the this is the only this is the founders edition launch oh. for people that is very limited to specific hardware and all this other stuff and the full you can play it for anything that has chrome yeah that's pitch. that's next year oh, okay I didn't so know that's that. the stuff that then is like okay more devices and 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 more stuff like that um this is the lockdown. Hey, it'll work on your Pixel phones and a fucking what is it? A Chromecast. 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 Yeah, I was gonna say Fire selling, Stick, yeah. but that's a different thing. What about a, like a Chrome notebook? I mm. don't think so. Huh? I don't think it's that's think, just browser based. Yeah, that's yeah. just a that's yeah. just a copy of Chrome. So I think that's the stuff that'll be next year. And also, I think only the paid tier because you have to buy the Founders Edition to get in this year at all. Right. So it, it's it's going to be people on that that pro tier. And the the free tier stuff is kind of next year. Okay. Um, so this is stuff that they've been saying. Like so so people going like, I can't believe it only works on four phones. It's like no, that that's, you know, that's that's literally, you know, that that's just them fleshing out stuff that they already more or less said. Like this never sounded like a good value wide, proposition. Well, yeah, <laughs> uh, like a good wide rollout this year. This sounded very limited um, in terms of their support. Uh, Mario and Sonic: The Olympic Games, Tokyo, twenty twenty. That kind of looks good. It kind of looks good. I That's hate. I hate. Part. I feel I like the skateboarding and the karate. Yeah. Like I want to try that stuff. Yeah. I'm gonna be disappointed because it's just another fucking mini game collection, right? But just looking at that stuff at E3, I was like, mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. 
And it's the 2020 games, mm. which are in Tokyo, yep. yeah. which Goku is an official ambassador for. So right. maybe he'll show maybe up. Goku's oh, nice in there. of him. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, Goku. Maybe Dragon Ball Fighters can spare one of their 14 Gokus to make an appearance. No. Hmm. Nope. They'll have to come up with their own new Goku. <laughs> it's Sonic, so- but Super Saiyan. It's Super Sonic. What's that? Uh, we also have some games with uh, no confirmed date here. Luigi's Mansion 3, uh, Spelunky 2, Windjammers 2, and Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. Mm. Yeah, those uh, are all still, still, still 2019 well, games according to like Wikipedia or whatever. I want to add Biomutant to that list as oh, well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, actually, I played that at E3, and that's that was surprisingly good. Um, it's a THQ Nordic joint they're publishing, but uh, um, that shouldn't I don't anything. think they showed that at E3. Yeah, they did. Oh, they did? It. Yeah, yeah okay. they had... Quite a few kiosks. Okay, I did not it, see it at the thing I went to before the show. Okay, gotcha. No, um, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, there's some good good physics in there. It's an action um, adventure game. Hmm. I'll check that out. Cool. Well, that's our look at uh, some of the games coming through this year. You guys ready to get in some emails? Yeah. Let's do it. Emails. Please. Bombcastgiantbomb.com is that email address to send in your emails to... Uh, as these people did. Please uh, email us if you're a bus driver and you have some. Yeah, we want to know uh, or call the after show. Call, yeah. leave, call, leave us a voicemail from the bus. Call 707 <laughs> exit flu at any time and leave us a voicemail at Especially any time. As long as there's no children on there, I think that's a violation of state law and you're going to get banned from Twitch. Yeah. If you do that. Yeah. That's, well, only for like two weeks. Yeah. Right? It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's apparently it's a good way to make money. Yeah. Uh, um, Let's see here. Uh, Jay writes in and says, hey, uh, what is your definition of a pig in a blanket? I grew up in to my early teens in Indiana, and up north, a pig in a blanket was a sausage link wrapped in a pancake. Hmm. When I moved down south, I found that a pig in a blanket is a Vienna sausage wrapped in pieces of croissant dough from a can mm. and baked in the oven to cook the dough. Yes. I feel like I have uh, seen it both ways, but my first reaction was the pancake with the sausage. Really? That's, I feel okay. like... Mine, the, mine is a little croissant. Mm. Too, yeah. But. Classically, I feel like I've always heard pancake, but I've really? eaten the croissant one way more. And yeah, that's I, my preferred. I, yeah. yeah. I, I feel like any sort of tubed meat wrapped in some sort of pastry mm-hmm. has the potential to has someday potential to be a pig in a blanket. Someday. Because like a bagel dog... I wouldn't call that technically no. a pig in a blanket. That's a thick blanket. Right. That's like a weighted, like a heavy a blanket. Bag. That's like, hey, man, thunderstorm's coming. Get in the bagel dog. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, the, I mean, the name describes it all. Pig in a blanket. Yeah. I got a, I guess, I forget what they called it. It was like a hot dog donut. I went to Mr. Donut in, in Tokyo and they had something that just looked like it had a tiny hot dog in it, so I got one of those. Japan mm-hmm. loves putting tiny hot dogs yeah, in things. Yeah, and so it was yeah. like, here's this room temperature tiny hot dog in the middle of this like pastry donut-y type thing. It was fucking bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, there's wow. a lot of Asian bakeries here in the Bay Area that just throw tiny little hot dogs in yeah. that little pastry. If, if those are mm. warm, like recently heated or cooked yeah. hot dogs, I'm there. But I just a room temperature hot dog? What the fuck? Am- My problem is that they're always a little bit too sweet. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, Cass from Chicago wrote in uh, with something. I'm not even going to read the email. Just the question. Is Super Mario All-Stars the first HD remake? Huh. I mean, te- video games? technically, no, because it's not. It's not actually HD. It's still, still 480 something. And you could even go back and say, like, Commodore 64 games that also came out on the Amiga. Mm-hmm got a pretty similar treatment i was gonna say it didn't uh there was you know super mario 3 on nes and oh wait no 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 you're high on drugs i'm high on drugs stay in school what what are you thinking of what am i thinking of i don't know no No, tell me what am i thinking of right now (laughs) super mario brothers 3 you're right okay i'm thinking of the pyramids hmm Mark writes in and uh, from Rochester and says, A friend and I turn on our PS3s and play Destiny to this day. Believe it or not, it's still fairly populated, able to do strikes mostly with these. I was curious if you guys <laughs> ever hop on a prior console generation and see any fairly populated online multiplayer games. I'm always tempted to boot up the PS3 to play Warhawk. 
I think those servers are good down. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think they shut it down. <laughs> Temptations <laughs> quelled. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Problem solved. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, I uh, hooked up a 360 at some point last year and just went as far back in Call of Duty as I could to see like if there were still people playing wow. and how hacked the servers were. Oh, sure. And it was just like, it was the sort of thing of like, oh, you shot one bullet and became Prestige 10 immediately because this is a hacked server. Like, it was just weird shit. Um, I'll dip back into Street Fighter 4 every once in a while. Okay. Um, and still, I mean, you can find games hmm. like... Oh, I'm sure. Still people playing which uh, Which platform? 360. Huh. The PC one, I think, is still somewhat active, too. I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, I, w- I would think. Um, Dan from Pennsylvania just writes in with a short message. He's concluded it all in the subject of his email. Fuck bubble tea. What? What? Get out of here, son. Yeah. What if you yeah. choke on those things? It's not me. Pennsylvania? It's not me. It's Dan. Miss me with that shit, Dan dog. And, it's Dan in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. I'm sure you have the highest class of bubble tea out there. Yeah. What do you think of Pennsylvania bubble tea? Mm. That's mm. why they started the Pennsylvania mm. Tea Party. They threw all that shit in the fucking river. I like me That's some shit. bubble tea, but I, I, I cannot give it to my son because I'm so oh, paranoid oh, that yeah, he's yeah. going to yeah. choke oh, on those things. No. Yeah. It's very slippery balls. Yeah. Yeah. Get him the hot ones. What's the best spot? Yo, uh, it depends. Do you want like more of the Asian side or more of like the kind of Americanized side? Yeah, that's true. I guess. Just give me what's the best. Yo, I fucking love Boba guys. Boba <sighs> guys because they got that dirty horchata boba, mm-hmm. shot of espresso over horchata. That shit's messed <laughs> up in terms of like classic yeah. boba, right? Well, it's that good, sounds pretty but good, but it though. feels like I'm drinking gentrification, like literally. <laughs> Yo, it's 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 tasty, fire. but it feels like the least authentic boba oh, you can possibly get both in like ingredients and yes. experience at the store so here's the problem uh, i uh if we're going towards like more asian uh flavored boba yeah uh if you're trying to get taro there's a differentiation mm-hmm. of do you want the really fake shit which is like the powder yeah. or do you want actual taro root yeah. and you never want actual taro root no, you want bad. the artificial stuff yeah yeah <laughs> uh teaspoon is pretty good okay you ever hit a bamboo Oh, don't get me started on bamboo, man. <laughs> I do not. I used to live next to a bamboo. Mm. So let me ask, where does quickly fall in Quickly this? is like the like D the, plus tier. Okay. Yeah. Quickly is like the 7-Eleven yeah. of boba places. No, I'd say gas station. Yeah. Okay. But then there's a good gas station boba place in South City. It's kind of the only boba I can get up there. Really? Yeah. Where I'm at. Uh, I don't know, know that there's... Like they opened a quickly in Petaluma not that long ago. I haven't been there, but there was one in like Roner Park or something. So. Okay. I feel like um, share tea is pretty good. Share tea is good. Plenty. Plenty. Down in the fi dye is pretty good. Hmm. Um, you like that sea salt crema? Dude, I hate honey lemon. Happy lemon? Happy lemon. Happy lemon. I hate that place. I do not. There's too many of them now. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Uh, Bubble tea rules. Well, Liz thing. from Queens wrote in with some science. Uh, but before I get into that, you got uh, what's your favorite malt liquor? You got a choice? Old I, English. All right. Okay. Uh, Mickey's. Mickey's. Okay. Old Mickey's. English. Yeah. Yeah. I've been known to fuck with Mad Dog once in a while. That's, that's a that's a different that's a, tier yeah. of, <laughs> of drink uh, than what we're going to talk about here. Uh, sometimes I get into some Ides or some King Cobra. Anyway, King Cobra. Liz from Queens uh, writes in and says, uh, Jeff's story of his encounter of a natty daddy in last week's Bombcast <laughs> has come <laughs> soon after a hack day at my company where I conducted a malt liquor taste test on my coworkers as my hack day project. Wow. That's, I feel like that's stretching the limits of hack day, but in a way I can I totally we should have more hack days. Yeah. yeah, I know. I thought this would be a good opportunity to share my findings with fellow scientists. These are the key findings from my double blind study of six different malt liquors. St. Ives is the worst tasting malt liquor with an average enjoyment rating of dislike. (laughs) (laughs) Agreed. Hurricane was the best tasting beverage with an average rating slightly above neutral. Steel Reserve and Old English had identical scores suggesting they taste basically the same. Natty Daddy was middling in terms of preference ranking. Hmm. Here are the summarized results from my study. A total of nine people participated. (laughs) Um... So the those nine people were promptly fired. So we so if if a three is neutral, and a two is dislike, uh, this scale goes from a two to three point one one, and I'll read from the bottom: Saint Ides with a two, Steel Reserve with a two two two, Old English with a two two two, 
Tecate Titanium with a 267. What? what is this? That sounds like something oh. I want to know more right. about. Uh, the Natty Daddy also scored a 2.67. King Cobe uh, doing all right with a 289. Oh. Colt 45 with a straight three, neutral. Huh. Yeah. No one's mad at it, yeah. but no one's like, oh, yeah, Colt 45, <laughs> except fair. for me, which, I, you know, sometimes. Yeah. And Hurricane with a 311. I don't know if I've ever seen What's well, Hurricane? Hurricane. Hurricane's a, there's a malt liquor. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not like, like there's E40s, like Slurricane, Slurricane and Hurricane yeah. type right. stuff. But, sure. And there's there's that. But Hurricane, yeah, it's just it's huh. just a malt liquor. Nothing fancy about it. All right. Well, apparently it's the best, according well, yeah. to these nine degenerates. I feel like, well, malt you know, at work. again, I didn't do a double blind taste test. So I, I guess, you know, like my bias would, would show through here. Uh, but I feel like Hurricane is on the lower end of my personal really? scale. Mm. Oh, we got to try this titanium. Yeah. It sound, I'm, I'm, Tecate, Tecate. I actually got excited about this. And I I hate it. <laughs> uh, she's written here Tecante Titanium, which uh, I, maybe that's the oh, actual name of it, but I, mm. I I just read that as probably a typo. Um, the whole study's bust. Oh, no. It's no, Tecate. It's, it's Tecate Titanium. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this looks so cool. This can looks awesome. Is it silver? It's, it's, se- it's like seven black point, and silver. It's 7.5, which is not bad. That's oh, yeah. Fair. Okay. Oh, apparently there's also a 5.5. I think you know, different states mm-hmm. are going to have different potencies depending on their the rules. How cool they yeah, are. Yeah, depending on how cool of a state it is. The lower the number, the uncool, the more uncool the state is. <laughs> we all know that. Um, thank you for the science, Liz. Uh, someone who doesn't want their real name shared writes in and says, we all know the Switch's D-pad sucks. My question is this. If the new Switch Mini is going to ditch detachable Joy-Cons in favor of integrated controls, how likely is it we'll get an actual D-pad this time? I wonder. I don't know if they change the design. I don't think they will. Yeah. 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 If you think about it, highly unlikely. the separated D-pad, the separated buttons are really only there because you can detach and turn it sideways. Yeah. It's the only reason they did that. But I feel like they've got so much Joy-Con branding. Like you can like individual pictures of the Joy-Con uh, in games and mm-hmm. stuff, and that they're just for uniformal sake, unif- unity, sure sake. Yeah. What am I trying to say? What am I thinking of right now? Pyramids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, they'll they'll keep the style the same, in my opinion. Yeah. A, a coworker of ours, apparently, John in Tennessee. Uh, wrote in with some bad news. I don't know John. Uh, you don't know John? I don't know Jack. Yeah. After Tuesday, Tuesday's episode discussing the possibility of Ice Cube being your coworker, I decided to go check Slack and the company directory for myself. <laughs> Unfortunately, I saw listings in the directory for top figures in the corporation, such as Dan Reichert and Will Brinson of CBS Sports, but I didn't see Ice Cube or O'Shea Jackson. Mm. As far mm. as I can tell, neither you or I can say that we are coworkers with Ice Cube. That's unfortunate. If they're not on the Slack, yeah. Oh, yeah, God. if it's not on the Slack, it's uh, you got to take it back. That's what they say. Yep. There's so many bad custom emoji in the CBS Slack. What the fuck is wrong with people, man? There it's and look so... at how there's like for weird me, it's, it's racist the, ones in there. Really? What the fuck? <laughs> it's the yeah. custom. It's the custom responses that get me. Oh like, yeah. Whenever you type the word "stream" and it, it comes like, up, it's like, just like yeah. song starts lyrics. singing at you. Yeah. It's just terrible. What the fuck is wrong with people? Ugh. Um. Let's see here. I upgraded to Discord Nitro a couple months ago, and it's maybe it made me kind of realize how important a monopoly on emoji can be, and how like you know Apple was trying to like really get that mm-hmm. going for a while. Just the idea of like having cross channel emotes that I can like I can I have you can a channel. inflict them I can upon people. Own. I can inflict them upon people. I can take them anywhere. Like, it makes me think, like, oh, Apple could totally charge $5 a month for premium emoji, and wow. 70% of the population would sign wow. up overnight. Oh, I don't know, man. Because they'd all be the same for everybody. It's, it's not, like, the thrill of the Discord stuff is not, like, a tier of emoji. It's that you're bringing your own emoji, sometimes animated, that if you need a picture of Ryback nodding, <laughs> that you can inflict on someone at any given moment... You can do that. Just, just to pull an example out of the air. Yeah. <laughs> he invented gifts anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, just ask him. Um, yeah. So I, 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 I uh, saw someone not that long ago saying that they had gone out of their way to track down the fucking biggest Sonic the Hedgehog fan server 
just so they could fucking oh, yeah. deliver Get those emojis to people. I, I've joined like Dragon Ball server. I joined that NBA server because there's some good ones of Shaq in there. Like I'm I'm I joined like 30 channels just for the emoji. You can steal them. Well, see, now that you're Nitro, you could just steal them, make your own server, and then put them on your server, uh, and then not have to stay on mm. all these. I just move them all to the bottom. Mm. I'm already on too many. I have to. I'm on like nine, and I feel like ah. Ah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yes, that one. Drew writes in and says, uh, "Was thinking about the Titanfall Two network." It was great having having a community to match up with versus random is making it a much better experience. Why didn't this get into more games? The Titanfall service? Remember the network stuff where like you would join and yeah. it would be like a, a, a clan type thing, except yeah. anyone could join it. And then if you were in that thing, it had its own happy hour. You joined like a chat channel for that, you know, that network, that yep. clan or whatever. Uh, it wasn't you even a clan. Play it wasn't together like, and, yeah, you could yeah. all play together and, and search out games together. And, mm -hmm. and it was like a really easy way to... Uh, especially by communities like ours to start like, hey, here's the Giant Bomb Network. The limit, is, the upper limit is pretty high on it. Yeah. So it's very easy to get in there. It was almost like a Discord server in some way. That was really cool. Um, but with less chat. Uh, yeah, it was a really That's cool idea part. that I was, uh, yeah, I, I would have thought that it would have made its way into into more I like Destiny it would have been, yeah, yeah pretty helpful. Then. Yeah, that'd be good. It'd be. I feel like it'd be less useful in something like Apex. Right. Uh, just because you know, it's kind of a three-player game, and mm -hmm. but, but at the same time, if you like want to team up with people that all have mics, or you want to try to find people that like have shared interests, like maybe that network system would be useful in Apex. I don't know. Yeah, no uh, mic zone. Yeah, but also I think like you have stuff like Discord now, and and like social media has yeah. evolved in that direction in some ways, and and maybe that's kind of picking up some of that. Uh, yeah, you're slack, probably right. A little bit. Um. And Slack. And Slack, yeah. <laughs> I feel like no one's, no one's using Slack. All right, let's, uh, a few more emails here. Uh, Joe in Texas says, I've been listening for a long time, and I think after years and years, I'm ready to play games on a PC again. Problem is, I haven't had a gaming PC since the early days of Voodoo cards and have no cool. experience building one, especially when it comes to things like power supplies, cooling, and motherboards. Oh, I especially don't know what news about the new AMD products means or what one should build. My question, are pre-built, ready-to-roll PCs a decent option? Or is it best to build it from scratch? If I go for building it myself, how on earth will I know I've made the right choices? <laughs> I should note that I work in education, so keeping things affordable is a huge plus. So uh, as somebody who built their first PC within the last, I guess it's two years now, um, PC Part Picker, was a huge resource for me. Yeah, like just I used that last time I built mine too. Totally. They, they've got like cool stuff. Like I actually did one of their featured builds. Like mm. they'll just have just like, hey, here's a random assortment of things that all work together. It's not like one box. You buy the stuff separately. Like you have to go out and find it mm -hmm. and on like Newegg or whatever. Um, and then they have like anyone can do a build. Like I can publish a build. Like here's my build. And, you know, you write about it, you write the specs and stuff. Like, there's usually, like, filters for price and, and all that stuff. That would be my go-to place to, if not commit right away, you can get a sense of, like, how much you would have to pay for what you want. Yeah. Uh, and they'll pull in, you know, they've got reviews for individual parts and stuff yeah. like that, which isn't always super well filled out, depending on what you're looking for. But, you know, you can kind of start to get a general sense of like, hey, is this cooler any good? Or does I, it have like a real common issue that I just don't see here? If I yeah. remember correctly, you could even like swap out parts and it would check compatibility. Yep. Yeah, yeah, they have a compatibility filter that is designed to keep you from buying the wrong shit, which is always fun. When you're like, oh, this is not the right RAM at all. Um, what I did, if you're if you're looking to keep it affordable, I know it's a bit of a ways away, but I did it over Black Friday. Mm. Um and I saved like three hundred and fifty dollars that way. Yeah, I think yeah. that's probably if you're, well. I mean, because you're limited to what you're buying, then you know. If, well, if I mean, yeah, outside I, of that window, I didn't do then everything. You can use PC Part Picker to, yeah. to pick the best stuff or cheapest stuff. Yeah, to, just to play devil's advocate, like like there's value in like not having to worry about any of that shit. Yeah, yeah. You, totally. you, you pay more for a pre-built, right. but it comes assembled, and you don't have to know any of that shit. Yep, you know, so uh, to deal with that, you know. Um, but how? Do you, I mean, you put it together yourself. We streamed. We it, put didn't it on we? stream. Yeah, yeah. So it definitely helped to have like you and Brad and everyone there who had kind of done this before. Um, but there's a trillion YouTube videos out there that, um, like. 
I'm sure you can even find a guy building the exact PC you're trying to build mm-hmm. on YouTube with like a step by step process. Yeah. Uh, it, I, it honestly, I thought it was going to be a lot more stressful than it actually was, but it's just be delicate in a few parts yeah. and you're fine. Yeah. And I think even if you don't wait for Black Friday for like the savings, like it might be worth it right now to wait off a little bit here as this AMD stuff settles. Yeah. Um, just see where the Ryzen stuff falls. Uh, you know, when, once it gets out there, they shake it down, some driver updates to work out some kinks if there are any. Um, and the new graphics cards, like these supers and, you know, the 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 uh, AMD stuff there as well. Like, just to kind of see how that stuff all fares. Um, waiting until, I guess, probably like end of summer. Or yeah. Like September-ish, October-ish. Maybe that stuff will be in a state where you feel a little more comfortable uh, about about investing in it. But, mm-hmm. but yeah. We we build all of our stuff from scratch here. So, yeah, we've got like three different vMix PCs now. And we've mm-hmm. yeah, done it all from from scratch based on previous builds or, or whatever, but it takes a lot of research to, you yeah. know, make sure that you're getting compatible parts and stuff. Yeah. It's, Take yeah. your time is like the number one thing Yeah, I, I would recommend is like really figure it out mm-hmm. ahead of time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm leaning towards maybe building something later this year. Like, like in that time frame, once That's stuff fun. has kind of settled down a little bit, like maybe it's getting to be new PC time. Yeah. Uh, that might be fun. That's the best time of year. Yeah. Uh, all right. Last email. Um, about this, we told you talked about, uh, there was the story going around about, uh, consultants working at Treyarch and how they hadn't been invited to the company party and, and, and all this other stuff. And, uh, someone wrote in here with, uh, an interesting kind of take on that stuff that I hadn't considered, but now that I'm reading, it, I'm like, Oh fuck. Right. This is. This is the HR nightmare that everyone... Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, regarding the story about contract workers at Treyarch, the treatment they are getting, which admittedly sucks, is directly related to the lawsuit several consultants filed against Microsoft back in the early 2000s. Mm. In that lawsuit, the contractors alleged that Microsoft treated the consultants like full-time employees, mm. inviting them to company parties, including them to various company functions, etc., but they were not entitled to the same financial benefits that regular Microsoft employees were entitled to, like bonuses, paid time off, company holidays, etc., the lawsuit had a huge cascading effect across the country. I know this because I was a contractor for IBM and was invited to the same type of inclusive events. After that lawsuit, I was no longer invited to these things, lest I forget I was a consultant and sue IBM for the same treatment. They are hiring a consultant to save on HR costs. Even though IBM uh, was paying about $60 an hour for my services, I received $16 an hour. It was still cheaper than paying the salary, PTO, 401k, medical, social security, and all the other costs associated with paying a full-time employee. The moral here is, if you're a consultant, complain to the company that actually employs you, not to the contracted company, and certainly don't sue the contracting company. If you aren't happy with the treatment you're getting, find a different gig than consulting. In my humble opinion, contracting for another firm is mostly terrible. Uh, that's that's, uh, terrible, that's yeah. this person's advice. Uh, I don't know. Uh, like if you're... A consultant unhappy and mm-hmm. maybe go somewhere else I, I, yeah it's yeah but anyway the the lawsuit is is the the bit that that made me pull this here um because yeah like that's always a concern is are you treating your contract employees or your temps or anything like, or if you're if you right. if they are doing the work of a full-time employee and you're keeping them on contract deliberately like that's a huge liability for a company and they'll get sued um and, and all this other stuff. So there's a lot of push pull there that makes that situation suck shit uh, from all angles yep. uh, in a lot of cases. So uh, yeah. And all the other email emails we got were about juggalos. Okay. Facial re- recognition. Yeah. We yeah. got, we got uh, five emails about uh, juggalo face paint blocking facial recognition algorithms Good. today. So good. it's good to know that we're That's the place, dark that, that, we're the place that people think of yeah. when they go like, man, Juggalo's in the news. I've got to tell the giant bomb cast. But <laughs> Thank you. That's, you know, on the other hand, we already knew. We, yeah, we, we have been dodging facial recognition yeah. systems for some time. Boop, boop. Yeah. That's going to do it here for the show. Cool. Thanks y'all for sticking with us and listening. Thanks uh, to everyone here for yeah, man. making its way through the show. Happy yeah. to. Yeah. Uh, come by giantbomb.com. We've got videos about video games up there on the internet for you to watch, including a video of this very podcast. Yeah. That's fucking ridiculous. Come watch that. We'll see you next week. Bye.